What's happening, weirdos? This is the incredible Ken Marino, who I love from so many things. Party Down, uh, Wanderlust. He's one of my absolute favorites. Here is a little taste. For the longest time, and I never thought about it, and you're going to make fun of me. I am not. I promise right And then now. somebody corrected me, and I felt like a fool. Right. I say, I would say, Let me tell you Sylvaneer. What is it? I would say, <laughs> I would say, Sylvaneer. And, and. I'm not making fun of you. I'm delighting. I, I, I'm delighting I, that you would say and, and Sylvaneer. I'm so excited for us to get into this episode, guys. As you can tell, if you're watching this on the video, I'm recording it in a hotel because I am on the road. If you would like to see me while I'm doing stand-up, go to PeteHolmes.com. We're about to add even more cities to this tour. They've been so great. I'm here in Portland. It was incredible. And if you like this show, why not try a Pete's Pick? Pete's Picks are products that support the show, but I actually use and I actually love, especially when I'm touring. I have been swearing by Magic Mind. I'm gonna be honest, I had two shows last night and it was a two Magic Mind sort of day. For those of you who don't know what Magic Mind is, it is a tiny little magical elixir that gives you better focus on your work and be more creative and drink less coffee. It is a mix of 12 functional ingredients, including matcha, nootropics that help you focus, and adaptogens that help you fight off stress. It is basically my little secret formula that makes me feel creative, in the flow, dialed in, happy, and ready to go. I have been drinking way less coffee. I've been noticing that coffee makes my teeth grit together, my, my fists clench. Magic Mind is not like that. Don't think of like uh, all jacked up, dialed in not wired in that flow state. It's like athletes have Gatorade, now creative types have Creatorade. You get 30% more done on average, that's five to seven hours of 30% more productivity after drinking. I just did the show in San Francisco and a fan came up to me and said, thank you for telling us about Magic Mind. It's, this is facts. She was like, it absolutely changed my mind. And I was like, right, I just had one. That's part of why the show was so good. It gives me access to my brain, gives me just the right amount of energy and just enough adaptogens to help curb, curb that stress and help me do what I need to do with a sharp mind, steady energy, immune support, and less stress. It is incredible, fights off ADD symptoms, fights off procrastination, fights off brain fog and fatigue and gets you into that flow state. And we have a special offer for weirdos from our friends at Magic Mind. Go to www.magicmind.co slash weird and use the discount code weird to get 20% off your first order and show your support of the show. That's magicmind.co slash weird, promo code weird at checkout for 20% off and show your support of the show. We're also brought to us by our friends at MeUndies, which I'm currently wearing. I'm wearing like a like a Hawaiian pineapple uh, MeUndies PJ pant or lounge pant, which I absolutely love. You know that feeling when you get, uh, when your crush texts you unexpectedly or when you make powerful prolonged eye contact, eye contact with that cute barista at your local coffee shop. Well, that's how it feels wearing the new limited edition MeUndies Valentine's Day collection. Add some heat to your V-Day with MeUndies and get 20% off your first purchase. Plus, get free standard shipping and free returns when you go to MeUndies.com slash weird. Val and I heard about MeUndies on another podcast and we did a complete overhaul of our PJ pants, our, our lounge pants, and the underwear. Top to tails, mostly our tails. Top to tails, complete rehaul because they are the softest, best fitting, in my opinion, the best patterned, the best looking, either classy, like just like a solid color that looks great and fits great, or like I'm wearing today, a fun pattern that puts me in a good mood in the morning. Because love is supposed to be fun. Whether you're someone else or just yourself, 
whether uh, sorry, whether you love someone else or just yourself, it's usually a good time. That's why MeUndies has super comfortable and cute undies, bralettes, loungewear, and more in flirty new prints for this V-Day season. Comfort is sexy, so get matching with someone you love or just match with your favorite all furball for the cutest pics anyone has ever seen. Available in sizes extra small to 4X, they have something for everybody to f every booty, excuse me to fall in love with. And MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order and free U.S. shipping right to your door. To get 20% off your first order, free U.S. shipping, and chat with their incredible Cheek Squad about any questions or sizing concerns, go to MeUndies.com slash weird. That's MeUndies.com slash weird. All right, guys. Enjoy Ken Marino. Get into it. Well, yeah, they gave us all this water. Look at those cases of water. Everybody has it now. I, I want to feel special, and, and I see it on so many podcasts these days. Oh, yeah, there's thank you. Yeah, they're different kinds. You want a different kind? No, there's no different kinds of water. Sparkling. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Flavored. What was that one? Flavored. Flavored. Uh, yeah, flavored water. Arguably, Coca-Cola is a different kind of water. So there's yeah, lots arguably. of... Arguably. <laughs> you are... My, I'm looking at your butt. Looking, I, know, you're looking, I don't you're mind. Looking at my Mr. Turk. I look at butts, and I was—it's also bright yellow. It looks like someone highlighted your butt. Yeah, it's, it's after Labor Day, but I figured it's going to be so hot today. It's still—I'm still able to use it. I'm booming you. I'm booming you. My wallet and everything over here. Testicles, spectacles. Testicles, spectacles, spectacle, testicles, spectacles. Do you not know testicles, testicles? No, no spec I'm aware of testicles, yeah. Am I, is, is there something specific I need to know about it? Spectacles, uh -huh. testicles, right. wallet, watch. It's how you cross yourself. Do you know this? Oh, you start with testicles when you cross yourself. It's all about the testicles. <laughs> you know my, you are my taking so long to sit down and if I was... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, How long have you been doing stuff in here? Did we start yet? Did we start yet? Are you, I'm so glad we have started because <laughs> this is one of, that was one of my favorite opening moments of all time. You still haven't sat down! You still haven't sat! How's it so cool in here, but that's not working? I mean, that's not on. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I, I point at you. Oh, bingo, bango. Bingo, bango. I got to, is it happening? What? This is the kind of thing that when you're, if you're stoned, <laughs> this, it's almost like ASMR. Can I tell you something about this? Uh, about what <laughs> Can I tell you something about this type of thing? <laughs> I can tell you the story uh, on your show. Well, you're doing it. I have one. When your show starts, let me know, and then we'll... But I'll tell you, the, uh, I based uh, another a joke off this, which is good. Although this was not originally a joke, I think it was just my hesitation to do this because I'm frightened and because of your reaction to my outfit or non-reaction. I just accepted it. Yes, I know. <laughs> but I've watched your show, I've watched this podcast, and I've... And I've, and I've I've realized that that uh, that you're you know you I mean you lay into people. Oh, this is your I lay into people. Look at that. <laughs> you know you get people. That's little, the real sponsor of the show. You give people, you know, some caca. And, I uh, don't give caca. Yeah, you give caca, but that's good. You like loving caca. You what? What episode did you watch that I gave caca? I watched every single one of them. That would have taken you <laughs> four years. Yeah. Yeah, this last week felt like four years because I watched every single episode. Where would you like me to put this? Because I don't. I'll put it over here. Put it on my phone. Just don't eclipse the liquid death with it. Okay. What? Um. <laughs> what do we start out with? So we're just going to start talking now. Let me ask you a question. Who goes two inches above a couch and then and then re erects? People who go take a shit in public bathrooms. <gasps> and women when they tinkle. And women when, and men when they tinkle. Do you not sit when you tinkle? I often do sit when I tinkle. But by the way, 
Get this on the record. It's great. Why aren't we all sitting? My daughter, my daughter. To pee? My daughter, I was peeing this morning. Oh, I have to do this. You Why do we do have that? to stand to my pee? <laughs> Why do we have to stand a podcast? What? <laughs> what? I, don't I don't know. Why not? Here, have a, you, you may. I'm letting you, as the host, like Johnny Carson, I'd go, it's not abandoning the bit. If, if, if I say, right. you may sit. You got it. And you had a nice coffee already. Is it cold brew? Let me tell you what my daughter said. Uh, tell me. She's four. <laughs> you want this here? She's. She... This is like. <laughs> Aesthetically, I know that she was. Presented you with this on yes. camera. You yeah, said yeah. Me, right? I collect TV guides. Say it into the microphone. When it's I was a younger, I collected TV guides. Normally, I'm loved. <laughs> when I collect TV, when I was younger, loved. I collected TV TV guides and Mad magazines, and um, and here, uh, and here is one of them. And so my wife is like, "How long are you going to keep your TV guide collection in our house?" And Did I she say, do quotes? Because it is a TV guide collection. Um, yeah, she did. Can I say something too? Why not? It's a podcast. Here's if not. It's going to be. I'm going to say lonely. something. You know how we all know that it's Frankenstein's monster. Yes. Yes. The modern, the 2022 version of that style of joke is pointing out why did you do air quotes? That's literally what it is. That's the 2020. Wait, what's the, what's 20... the 2022? You still haven't sat. What is the 2022? What? Wait, the, the, <laughs> explain that joke to me. <laughs> yeah. Da 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 the balls at the ladies with their uh, jugs, jugs, jugging. It was a different time. You could say ladies time. with you their could, jugs. You jugs could, of jugging. course, you could. 1931. It was 19. It was the mid 30s. Yeah. 1931 is early 30s. Yeah. Early 30s. Mid to late 30s. <laughs> early to late 30s. Early to late. <laughs> the early what to late the, 30s. Was it Meet the Mets? It, I mean, it, I mean, there was a Meet the Mets song. You live in a Frankenstein's monster. Thank You're, you. You, you grew mean? up on Long Island, so you grew up yeah. telling people you live on Long Island, which is, it's actually Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> like, it's one of those. What does that mean? Which is also, what was the other example I gave? I don't oh, know. That's what I was quotes. asking. Because your wife went, your TV guide collection. But she didn't. And I, I know, did. I know. You did. I did. You just, think I thought she really did? But here's what. Here, but I don't put think the, I thought she really here's did. Here's the thing. I was putting the quotes in the wrong thing. I was saying, my wife said. Oh, oh here. Over the whole thing. Over the whole thing. But I couldn't. <laughs> you were just I doing couldn't, punctuation. I couldn't guarantee that she said those exact words. But I could guarantee that she said. TV guide collection. So that's why. Wow. So you spread out the quotes. It was a pull quote. So I was I was pulling a part of the quote <laughs> and then I was quote. paraphrasing the rest of the quote. As so is your want. How do you paraphrase uh, if we, if we, using your hands? Because I, I like to use you my hands. You have to italicize them. You, you sort of paraphrase. Or this. That's good. Which just looks like you're putting a cat to sleep. You Not know, dead. Like lulling it with uh, scratches. Right. Not dead. <laughs> No, I just started purring when you did that. Right. Are you a cat person? Well, in that situation, I was the cat. No, I understand. Uh, but I like cats, sure. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I mean, why not? We're on a podcast, right? I used to do, hi, how are you? Don't acknowledge Katie. Why not? <laughs> Katie, by the way, I it's offer- It's virtue signaling. Oh, Katie's a person too. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Katie, I offered to buy some coffee. I'm kidding. But did you I want one? I didn't pass it on. And guess who knew that? <laughs> oh, there you go. Wait, I used to do this just to kind of change it up. Of course. But that looks like you're looking for... What am I looking for? The G-spot. <laughs> 
I, I would have to kind of blend them together, and then. Well, that's yeah. this is you're having a three way. Oh, I see. I see. There's three people involved. <laughs> and just to be clear, you're still a cat. Uh, you're a cat. Yeah. <laughs> In that situation, and I'm so it was too dirty yeah. for the first ten. Menage a toi with menage, meow, meow, menage a toi, menage a pa, menage a pause, menage a pur, menage a pur, menage a pur. Is there an R in menage a toi? What menage a pur? Menage a pur. Tell me about what happened to this. Well, I just got that for you because my wife said uh, to get. To ask me how long am I keeping my TV guide collection? How long are you keeping your TV guide collection? And she makes a great point. What am I doing? I don't know, Ken. You're a man of leisure. Yeah, but what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, they sit in boxes in my house. I also collected mad magazines, which I'm not getting rid of those. Yeah. Those make me laugh. These, these are fun. They're nostalgic, but I want to give them to people who would appreciate them. So this was in your home? This was in my home. What about these bags? That was uh, in my bag. You couldn't find ba a bag that fit perfectly? Bag, uh, in the kitchen. <laughs> I just didn't want to, you know, um, have my, the oils from my finger really destroy the Dick Clark cover. I gave my friend Joe DeRosa a joke. I shouldn't talk about this, but I said, when Dick Clark died, do you think everyone stood around his bed and went, 10? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right before he died. Right before, right before he died. He died. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you can see why I gave it away. Yeah. It's too dark for old Holmesy's no, face. No, it's fine. You like it? Yeah, it's I great. had something about him in his prime smiling at me as I told that joke to you. He liked it. You think He's so? probably looking down on us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or up. I don't know what he did in his personal life. Well, also, heaven is below us, too. Can we just acknowledge that? It's all around. Actually, There's no up. <gasps> Ken, don't jump to the third act of the show. It's in my Mr. Turk shirt. Yeah, that's a great shirt. Thank you so much. You do wear it. It's not a full bit. So the bit was, so my wife and I went to a Palm Springs uh, a party where we all had to wear, what are those uh, long kind of gown type? Uh, Graduation? No, they're just, I forget what they're called, but Mr. Turk sells them. Mr. Turk is the company that sells this. So we drove and we didn't have them. And so we went into uh, Palm Springs and then we stopped at Mr. Turk and I saw this and believe it or not, everything from the sandals <laughs> down to the, I mean, everything on sale. This outfit was on sale. So I said, can, let me try can that. You, can you believe it? I can't believe it. <laughs> so I said, let me try that on. The guy's like, yeah, go ahead. There's a dressing room. You don't have to, you don't have to ask me. Just pick it up and try it on. So I did. <laughs> it fit like a glove. Yeah. Or like a shirt and a pair of shorts and a, sandals. Those sandals are like somewhere between a gladiator and Jesus, but That's on, a, right. on a boat. Can you imagine if Jesus, Jesus was a gladiator? a gladiator? Just going around. <laughs> he, that changed his whole kind of message. Yeah, slaughtering people. Yeah. I used to have a joke. Sorry, I'm going to just tell you jokes that I think of. Uh, listen, that's... Kenny. What you do. do for a living. living. I also want to know what, what episode you saw where I gave someone caca, but here comes the bit. I won't forget You don't that. give people caca. You just, you know, you, uh, you have fun with everybody. I razzle-dazzle You them. give a little razzle all from a loving space. What I, listen, before you tell just me like, your story. So story. when you asked me to do this, I, I was like, oh God, I got to. Like I, I got to think of an excuse. Well, because I was with Ben, right? And Ben's like <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, ben Schwartz, and he Ben Sonic the Hedgehog. Ben Sonic the Hedgehog Sw Schwartz. No, the last name's gone. It's gone. That's now? That's in his contract. Really? Yep. And All for right, no well, reason. Then, when I was talking to Ben Sonic the Hedgehog, thank you. Uh, Miramax, you're welcome. You. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's Miramax. Uh, I went and listened to the one, the several that you'd done with him. With Benny Schwartz. Yes. And then I just went down the rabbit hole of listening to a number of other ones. The Sonic Hole. Um, I, no, not the Sonic Hole. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Now I'm just listening to you. And I went, you know, kind of. And as. Uh, oh, so okay. So you heard, did you listen to the whole first Ben Schwartz episode? The non-Zoom one from many years ago? I listened to some of that one. I mean, you know, okay. you, you these are these, these are, are long. I mean, these are two hour. These are chunky donkeys. Uh, chunky donkeys. These are chunky donkeys, and you, even if you dip them in your coffee, it's still a meal. It's still a meal, 
but I listen. But what I remember is a lot of stuff about um, video games with Ben. So I okay. think that might have been the second one. That sounds about right. What were we talking about? Well, look, all I'm going to say is one of the hardest times I've ever laughed is the first time Ben did it. Oh. And I'm not even going to tell it, but let's just say I told a story where I looked like a fool. And we did the story again, but he <laughs> improvised it so it went my way. Oh. And I sang spontaneously without any thought, and I will always love you, Whitney Houston style. Sure. Immediately. But I meant it. Like he healed me. Like, like a story... Where I was embarrassed, he flipped it and redid it, and it like it, it was like therapy. He's very good at that. He is very good at that. Yeah. And you know what? what? This is actually uh, Tony Robbins, who I, I I always say this when I bring him up. I don't know where he is in the, the public. The, 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 the giant. The giant. <laughs> Yeah, he lives at the top the guy of a with beanstalk. The gigantic blockhead. It's not. It's only gigantic to us. To him, it's right, just to a him, head. It's a n normal head. He it's looks a normal at us head. And says, all these people with their tiny heads. All these people with their tiny heads. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't understand. Yeah. Picks up a horse and takes a bite. That's right. He eats and a whole like, horse. Wow. He thought yeah. it was chocolate. He thought it was a chocolate. Horse. <laughs> he thought the brown ones were chocolate. Somewhere near There's Easter. <laughs> and blood just gushes out, and it's a horrible surprise every time. <laughs> That it was actually, and it starts kicking. He does it over and over again? Oh, this is something that he does. When will I learn? <laughs> and then he puts it down. Tony, don't put it down. Bite its head off. It is It is whipping and neighing. <laughs> End it. So he just lets them suffer as he eats them. Do I have something in my tooth? No, I just wanted to touch my teeth in the oh. way that some people might touch their chin. Okay, do I have but something I on my chin? <laughs> the guy. Hey, Ken, how's it going? Good. Do I have something on my... <laughs> he says when something traumatic happens to you, you should replay it in your mind. I've done this. Replay it in your mind uh, faster as a cartoon, like funny, like have it go bigger. Like if your boss yells at you and right. it freaks you out. Do it faster and funnier. Just picture your boss coming in, but he's a cartoon. And he's like, I told you to have this report system. Right. <laughs> and just do it over <clears throat> and over and this is kind of what we're doing with movies and TV is we're watching other people process the same problems and feelings that we have. But for some reason, that helps our brain make sense of reality and, and give a little distance, a little perspective. So he says just like cut cut the middleman and just... Just if, make your own movie in your head and, make watch, it, and make it faster and funnier because that's a note you always give in Lightning comedy. And Titan. Hey, guys, uh, that, that was great. A little faster, funnier. Yeah, faster, funnier. Faster, funnier. And funnier. bigger. And bigger. Don't do it. Ken Marino, Rob Riggle. Wait a second. Don't don't give me that sleepy town. See, that's the thing I'm talking about. Kind of like, wait, why did we even pull wait off the a second. highway? See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> why did we even? I wouldn't even use the bathroom. This is the ribbing that I was. In this <laughs> this no, is what I'm talking no, about. No, this no. is what I mean. I think it was a. <laughs> I just realized I thought I was putting down Rob Riggle, but you were like, he's no. where the action is. <laughs> Well, you were saying, you were saying, make it bigger and faster and funnier. So they're no, just uh, bigger. But we were uh, uh, pairing it up with faster and fun. Just bigger. We were pairing it up with faster and barely funnier. touching, barely touching. Well, we do did a little. It? We do did you feel a little it? ET. Do you feel it? Don't touch. Don't touch. Oh, we doing a little energy. Yeah, you feel it. You're you're better than Rob Riggle. Yeah, I feel. I'm not better than. Rob I didn't Riggle. say anything. I heard that. It was that through the energy. My eyes are closed. So. <laughs> Um, Robbie's on the mind because I've been wanting Rob's the best. Him. He's the best. I've been wanting to have him on the pod for about a decade. Well, now you're not going to get him. Well, that's why. I'm doubling down. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. So this is now, this is called, <laughs> fuck you, Rob Riggle. Jesus. <laughs> no, no. Knock it off. Stop it. But I'm not ribbing you, only yes ending the, that you wanted a gentle ribbing. Where um, were we? I like be love. Do you, do you have on your thing, be love, and you got uh, the Joker hugging Batman? Did you do that? Whose painting is that? I did paint that. You painted that? Yeah. I love it. You do? I do. You're a sweetie? You're a sweetie? You're a secret sweetie? Not I secret. mean, that's not, it's not a secret. You're just a sweet man. I mean, I'm just, a, I'm just a, you know, a sweetie. You're here to love. It's all about love, right? Well, what I like about be love is that it, being nice, I'm all for being nice and being polite. He's, he's talking about a sticker I have. My my treadmill used to be here, and I'd look at be love, and um, it's just a it's a reminder that love is actually like a state, and and you know what I love about it, it's actually the state that emerges when you when you turn everything off, 
Like if you can settle down your mind, if I could stop doing riffs about Rob Riggle and if I could stop wondering right. how I look on camera or wondering what I'm going to say next or whatever it might be and just like ease into what's happening, into the moment, into reality, I notice that my natural state actually is love. It doesn't mean I like everything, but like I can find the spacious, bright place. Yeah, that's interesting. Where everyone's welcome. I agree Even with the stuff I don't like. For example, Ooh. well, uh, my father doesn't listen to me enough. But if I'm in love, there's my dad being my dad. It's okay, right? That's his. But I've settled down. I've I've turned off all the voices that go. My father should You've listen to me more. Turned off judgment. I turned off judgment. That's a great way to put it. And I just and I'm just mm. loving everything that is, including the things that I don't want. And just kind of, you ever have that where like reality sort of feels like a dream and some fan comes up to you and they're like, I'm a party down. And they, but you're just like, look, look, at the, look at this guy, he's spitting on me. <laughs> but like you can find a dreamlike appreciation for the absurdity of whatever's going on. Okay, so I'm, I'm really getting this from Byron Katie who wrote Loving What Is, which is an incredible book, highly recommend. When you can love what is and drop a lot of your suffering is coming from wishing something was different. Like I wish my father would listen to me, which by the way, my dad does listen to me from right. time to time. So this is just a good example. So wanting people to change the way they behave. Yes. There's like a, yes. Well, well consider it. What, what is something, oh, we don't have to do you, but this is what Katie would say. I say, my father should listen to me more. She would say, is that true? And I would be like, yeah, I mean, like, what am I basing that on? <laughs> like, like, where am I getting the idea that he should, that I am in control of how much people should, how much you should listen to me? Right. How much anybody, like, I should dictate, like, you should only hear me, Ken. Right. Even your own thoughts, your own feelings. Move them aside. Right, Here right, I right. come. Or I need my father to listen to me more. Is that true? Because here I am. Doing fine, moving around, feeling sometimes feeling sad. That's also okay. Well, let me ask you something. When your father does listen to you, you recognize that. You mean right? when that happens? I'm just well, kidding. Just kidding. Uh, there's got to be a moment where yeah. your dad takes something in that you for say, sure. Right? Yeah. And so when that happens, do you feel differently? Different, differently. Yeah, differently. Feel differently. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> Sorry, you got me stuck on adverbs. That's a great question. If when the moments that I've had with my father of like deep connection where like he's well, really Well, when you're like, oh, me. finally he listened to me. So you're comparing when he doesn't listen to you to something, right? Yeah. Or not. I, I mean, I would assume that you, when you say my father doesn't listen to me. Yeah. Right? You're comparing it to the moments where you feel like he- He did. He did, right? And that sets, that's brilliant. I Is love that it. right? Yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. And so what are those moments? And, and, and are they far and few between or do they exist at all? Or have you made up a version of what it would be like for him to listen to you and he's well, I never wonder listened to you? how you are, because like I called home on Sunday and I got my dad <clears throat> and we FaceTimed. And I was talking to Val, my wife, about it later. And I was like, my dad, I got my dad in a great mood. Like I got him in one of those moods where he was, he just had more ram. He had more energy to spare, more ener uh, more space in his mind for me and for what we were saying. So I got like this primo dad. And then the belief that causes suffering later is I want that dad all the time. Right. But that's not fair because I'm not, you're not Primo you all the Pete. time. Exactly. I so, mean, it was what you were saying to Ben, just to go back to one of the things where you were like, you guys were talking about, uh, you were saying, be be my, uh, you know, uh, would you want to hang out with me when I'm not yeah. on or doing yeah. like my show persona or some version yeah, of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Where you were like, and questioning, do, would people want to hang out with me when I'm not just doing bits or being funny? Like when I have a bad day or I'm- yeah. Right. So. Exactly. And you're, you're, you listen <clears throat> perfectly. Cause really what I'm saying in that is like, Oh God, am I like my father that I have big ups? And then like, maybe I'll be like, I'll have days where I'm just like, nobody. Yeah, <laughs> like, sure. You feel that way too? Of course. Of course. And are, how are you with sharing less than Sterling? Obviously all of the Kens are Sterling, but when you feel less than Sterling, do you hide? Do you retreat or are, can you share that with your wife? With your kids? I, yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm not even aware of it, and sometimes it comes out in ways where um, my wife will, for example, just just since you brought up my wife, you know, she's like, "Whoa," you know, like like I'll I'll 
be, I'll have a, I'll be short. I'll be, yeah. I'll be, I won't be patient or I'll, but I, but I, and she might point it out or I might recognize it right afterwards. And I think I have the wherewithal to kind of be like, sorry about that. That was because I'm just dealing with X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, Can so I tell you the one I use the most with Val? It's it's really helped my life yeah. immensely. We'll be right back mid-rolls. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is um, I'm sorry. I was just embarrassed. L like I'll, I'll catch myself feeling inadequate or feeling like ill-prepared for some sort of situation. And then I'll be short or not as warm as I'd like to be to Val. And almost always when I look to the feeling that sort of pushed the shortness off the shelf, like yeah. pushed it into reality, yeah. the feeling was, I'm I'm not ready. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. Everyone's going to see that I'm a clammy, wet, sweaty boy with braces. You know, that that boy that we hit pause on. Yeah. That we're, that I'll speak for myself, that I'm afraid people are going to discover that's that's who I still am. Like, he's still in there. So like a lack of, like a lack of conf confidence in those moments. It's like a, a fear of being exposed. exposed. Yeah, I suppose. Don't you feel like everybody though, ultimately every, who, who, the only person who, well, I was going to say the only people who don't feel that fear of being exposed are narcissists, but those are the people who feel it, fear it the most, right? I wonder. But isn't I, that the whole thing that I, narcissists, they're, they're not, they're not people who aren't aware of that. There is a deep thing of like, I'm going to be exposed. So I'm going to triple you know, down, to triple down on that, which yeah, is yeah. exactly what, you know, shithead ex, you know, president. Uh, well, that's that was my question for you. <clears throat> I... When I tried to find compassion for Trump, somebody I, I disagree with, obviously, I wondered in the morning, and I'm putting this question to you, when he puts his socks on and he's kind of resuming his personality, you know those feelings in the morning where you're, I feel the Pete Holmesiness kind of mm -hmm. coming back in and I've done a lot of work to love myself. I've, I've done a lot of work to soften myself, believe it or not, as I'm flapping around and talking too much and all this <laughs> stuff. But this is effort. Right. But like... I don't mind when Pete resumes control of me. I like Pete and I work on Pete. Right. But there are some mornings where I'm like, oh God, it's just too much. And my question is, does Trump in the Oval Office, in the in the the bedroom, I was well, trying to- We're not in the Oval Office anymore. No, I know. But, but when he was, I'm thinking right. of like, that was when it was the most necessary to always be yeah. the Trumpiest Trump you yeah. could ever Trump. When he put on the socks, did he ever, just quietly in the dark. Question his- Just go like, oh God. Like just that. It's a good question. I think it's an important question. I don't think he has the awareness of it. I think he's That's so a very, deep into yeah, yeah. who he is that and and worldview worldview that that it that that it doesn't come into play anymore. I think that's interesting, and that goes back to I think it's static, and then he's clicked in, and he doesn't he never questions his. That's what we're talking behavior. about. The moment when you question, and Jason Alexander just did the pod, it just came out, and he was saying to have the courage to look in the mirror and like at the ugliness, at your own pettiness, your own greed, right. your own uh, shallowness, anger, whatever it might be, rage. You have to you have to be brave to look at that. So you're, I I, I would agree with you. You don't think there's a moment. He never, he never, he's never gone up to anybody and been like, "I'm so sorry. I was, <laughs> um, I was." Um, I was thinking about something else and I snapped at you or, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, or like you, you said, like, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I was, I, that was me. I was, I, I was scared. Or can I, I talk was, to you for a second? I'm just having a big day. I, I was just, I got 20 <laughs> things on my mind and I, um, I didn't even mean it for you. I did not treat you properly there. No, that I've never in a, never is... in a well, uh, million years would he do that. But you and I have done that. Right. Right. And We've I, gone up to people we care about and said, sorry about that. That was fucked up buddy. on my part. So Father Greg Boyle, who just did this podcast just before Jason, he talked about how whenever he does, he's a prison chaplain sometimes, and he says that the guards always say the same thing, which is, I don't, I'd be nicer to the inmates, but I don't want them to mistake my kindness for weakness. And I think there's a similar thing going on with Trump-type folks. If I said, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
I was thinking about my big red tie. Right, right, like, right, I, right, I, I right, didn't, right, right. I didn't even mean I'm you. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. They think that it, that we would take that as weakness, but Father Greg makes this incredible point where he goes, "The only once you see reality, once you see the big picture, what's going on here, you recognize that the only strength is kindness. That's actual strength." Do you, yes, I know, no, I know I would, you know I would, this. I would, I would, because I, I thought you were going to say not, it's kindness, but the only strength is admitting weakness. weakness yes. right? The only strength is being like, I don't know it all. I'm, I'm figuring it out. I just move my head like I'm swirling a delicious wine in my. I was what like, kind of wine do you like? <clears throat> I used to love sake actually, which is a rice wine. Mm -hmm. Sure it that? is. <laughs> I just didn't want you to think that I didn't know that sake wasn't wine. No, no, you. It is I, I mean, I, 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 for the moment until you correct, until you not correct it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anticipated. Sentence, I, said, I don't know what to do. <laughs> do I wait until after the podcast to tell him that sake is not? It is though. But it is. It's but rice it is. wine. It's yeah. a rice wine. Uh, it's a rice wine. It's a beautiful rice wine. We have the best rice. So some of the best sorry, rice wine. I don't know why I said that about sake. I don't. I don't even really care for it. I, he won't stop apologizing. I actually love sake. <laughs> I, I didn't mean. Which, by the way, is what uh, Taiko Taiko Watiti and Reese. What is it? Taika. Taika. Fuck. I always don't say Taika, but then I do say Taika. Is uh, is just that? Is going like I don't like you. I like your little yellow shit. Not not that it's little. It's not little if it's just right. Not that I'm looking at the curves of your arm. Not that I mean you do have curves of your arm. You must work out. Maybe you do get it from picking up your kids. I'm not thinking about you picking up your kids. I mean, maybe you do. Wait, I don't want to say your impression of him, or is this? Some, this is a style. Is, is this it's when like you the met him and he did something like this. No, I, this no, is the essence. Of, the essence of the essence a very uh, uh, New Zealandy mm -hmm. sort of flavor of comedy is the opposite of Trump. <laughs> yes. Right, constantly. Trump, just, we're like correcting. Look at that dumb shirt. Is right, Trump? Right. He's like, I like those shorts, in, unless they're meant to be a long pant. If that's what you consider a long pant to be, and then right there, constantly on the thigh. correct, self correcting. Yeah. <laughs> we think that is funny because it's so weak. But I didn't mean it, the burgundy in my mouth. It was burgundy. Was just appreciating that you're saying there's. A, we need a new model for strength, which is. I say it to my daughter all the time, even though she's she's only four. I'd be like, "Yeah, Dad, I I made a mistake. I was wrong. Like, I got overwhelmed. Right. Sometimes when she's screaming, I go like, "Baby, this is this is really freaking me." <laughs> like, I'll just tell her right. instead of you know throwing down the gauntlet or like trying to do an impression of what a what a powerful man or dad is supposed to how do. Old, how old's your daughter? She's four. She's four. She'll be four this month. You wanna come to the party? I mean, I was hoping to get some sort of an uh, invitation to the birthday party. I for entertainment, I can juggle, I can ride a unicycle, I can. I You'd have, be a great clune. Have you ever done any clooning? Um, I have. Uh, <laughs> you weren't sure how to take it. Well, the truth is, is uh, in high school. Well, when I was younger, you know, before the uh, the TikToks and the internet and all that stuff, you had to just figure out stuff to. To to um, throw on a VHS, yeah. To to kind of well before before that before that or, that or not right when that was starting, but we didn't have it right away. We didn't have the VHS. Right, I'm a little older right. than you, so right. I taught myself how to. I bought a book and taught myself how to juggle. Oh, and I from a book. A, from a book. What does the book say? No, 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 no. Throw it now. Throw it now. No, 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 <laughs> no. Broke no, it down. It was like the dummy's guide to juggling. And then <laughs> I I was like, I'm going to get a unicycle, and I'm going to teach myself how to unicycle. So I guess I had some sort of want to be in the circus or a clown. Yes. Um, and then um, in high school, somebody hired me to come to their party and be a clown one time, and I juggled. And that was so. Yeah, I guess I was a clown. I was a clown. I, I once. wish I, I would was love a clown to see once. you in high school. You juggle, everyone claps, and then you realize you have nothing else, That's and you it. go. You go back to the book. <laughs> squirting flower. Squirt. No. Oh, I had to buy a squirting flower. Before. <laughs> Can't just do. Can you do it with a regular flower? No, Does just, anyone have a flower? I juggled. I rode a unicycle for you know uh, uh, thirty seconds, and then I uh, th th went over to the food and I ate it and I left. That's what you do. Orgy rules. Yeah, do orgy your, rolls. Yeah, do your thing, hit the buffet, then leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you said, I, I'm hard of hearing. Did you say orgy rolls? I, I said orgy rules. Orgy rolls are the cinnamon buns at the buffet in an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> they love anything that has Thank a body you. part. I was in. hoping for some sort buns. of buns. Yeah. 
Cinnamon, cinnamon buns. Rolls and an orgy. No, buns. Always buns. Never rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cinnamon buns. And they love uh, footlongs, obviously. Sure, of course. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. Cantaloupes, melons, and melons are any, oh, of, any, oh, of any kind. You can't, you can't throw a, a condom without hitting a melon. Um, what uh, what else are we talking about? What else? I'm, so, not, I'm so, not done enjoying no, the, the orgy. They only have foods that are body parts. Okay. We don't need to worry ourselves. Everyone can think of their own at home. But uh, <laughs> kiwis always in pairs. Um, oh, pears. pears, pears. Sure. Um, tell me. What what you it sounded like you were about to say heavy something. cream, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was I gonna heavy cream? Heavy cream sickles. I don't know. I was trying to think of something. Just heavy cream was fine. Yeah, you think I, I didn't like heavy cream? I don't know. You did a little fart and then the little fart was like there's mic. so much laughter coming up that a fart came out that I chose to delight you the way I had been delighted to turn it into a tiny wet one. <laughs> um. Be love. Tell me a memory you have, and I want you to love it, of when you were when you were putting it together. Uh oh. That little Kenny Marine. Yeah. On Long Island. Yes. Frankenstein's monster. Is Long Island Frankenstein's monster? No, no, no. Correcting people, I'm I, I grew up on Long Island, not in Long Island, is is similar to correcting it wasn't Frankenstein, it was Frankenstein's monster. Oh, gotcha. So here's a question. Oh, so this is the, you were ribbing somebody for saying Mario instead of Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it was Ben. That's right. Mario. Yeah, he said Mario. What do you say? I bet he's from the tri-state area. Me too. And I say Mario. Mario. And my kids and my wife. Mario. Correct me. Because it sounds like a woman whose last name is. But you know, something. honestly, here's Mario. my feeling. Who cares, buddy? Why can't if we? You want to put on the who we, cares pants? Why can't we? Like what? Here's my question about them. About Mario. Not about Mario, but about like saying <laughs> stuff. Everybody says stuff a little differently. I mean, people from Boston. I mean, their whole thing is all. It's that's just nuts. It's goofy troopy. But it's but you know it is it is what it is. But it is right. So why? I, this is a question, and it's, it's not. I don't mean to like uh, come, come at you, but why did why did you f- need to correct him? Uh, something to talk about, I suppose. That's it. That's your question. I, I was so hoping you were going to say, "Why do people feel the need to correct?" Well, I mean, in general, I in mean, general. I'm using you as an example, but like, why do people feel the need to correct? Well, I think you could step it back to basic tribalism and identity. My group says Mario. You say Mario. Right. I say it wrong. I I fully no, no, admit. I'm not even saying you. No, say but it I wrong. do say it wrong. But you don't. But like for example, I if, I used to say. What is wrong? Check mean? this out. We I can used find to say three hundred million people that say Mario. I used to say like it's when people say library. Library is wrong. Of course, but some people say it. <clears throat> and a lot of people it. on Long Island say it. I don't say it <laughs> <clears throat> that way, but you know, but I, I've. For the longest time, and I never thought about it, and you're going to make fun of me. I am not. I promise right And then now. somebody corrected me, and I felt like a fool. Right. I say, I would say- Let me tell Sylvania. you the difference. What is it? I would say- <laughs> <laughs> I would say Sylvania. And- and I'm not making fun of you. I'm delighting. I, I'm and, delighting and, that you would say and, and I got, souvenir. It's and and so I was corrected, souvenir. and I was like, "It's souvenir," and and they're like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's souvenir," and I'm like, "All right, well, what's the difference?" And they're like, "Because one is correct and one isn't," but like I just then all of a sudden I was like on the defensive. Because of something that I was never even aware of, and I felt then I made then I then I felt bad. Well, that was a power trip for the person who corrected you for sure. Well, or there's not, a ge- or there's not. a gentle way to do it. It sounds like they did it kind no, of. No, well. no, they did it. They did it pretty gently. Oh, really? But they, but, but still, I was. I got. I felt embarrassed. <laughs> and the truth is, is Look we at the all. You've but given the, me. but the truth is, is like throughout life, we all miss classes on some something. You right? weren't there. We this... all miss. Not, I mean, I mean specific, but like we yes. all just sometimes we miss out on shit, and Bron- we forget. We don't. We don't. We don't hear it correctly, and then we 
say it that way for a Buddy, long time. I said channel instead of channel until I was 25 no, years you old. Didn't. I did. My first wife. I don't know if she's alive or dead. I was going to go, may she rest in peace. I don't know. <laughs> but my first. <laughs> she said, are you saying channel? So God love her. She helped me and she did it gently. Channel. I used to say Turn, cha change, the, change channel. the channel. I want to get a silver veneer. <laughs> okay. So here's the, here's the other thing. I was on a show. I was shooting a show in here. and Silver my and I was a guest on the show, and I my the I I, the, I said the word. I don't even know if it was, I don't think it was in the script, but it might have been a line in the script. And I said uh, uh, D O N K E Y, donkey. I said donkey, donkey. What did you say? It's donkey, 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 donkey. <laughs> This is like when you go on Google and you click pronounce donkey, <laughs> donkey. And I, wait, and I, I'm not hearing it. Katie? I said, some people say it with like a U, like a donkey. Like donkey. My mom says that. Donkey. Donkey. What do you say? Well, now I'm confused because I believe I said donkey and she was like, it's donkey. And she made fun of me. Okay. That person, was she chewing on a strand of wheat? But maybe I said donkey and she was like, it's donkey. Donkey. I think, I think I said maybe donkey. I think I said donkey. Dun and she said, <laughs> and she said, it's donkey. And I was like, okay. And I was a guest on the show and I felt terrible. Okay. And I was embarrassed. And I didn't, I, you know, and I, you know what, Pete? <laughs> I didn't appreciate it. Because I'm, hu I'm not perfect. No. I'm human. Yeah. And I, I missed that, that day. <laughs> Your donkey day. I, so whoever said it to me said it the wrong way, and so then I said it the wrong way, and I didn't need to be corrected on whatever the hell the UPN show was. It was a UPN show? I don't know. CW, maybe? Those are sixes right there. One of those. That's sixes. One of those shows. I know it was one of those uh, <laughs> shows. Well, okay, Aaron Sorkin. Oh, whenever, here we go. Here. <laughs> no, you, a good friend. If you, is he? No. I mean, I've worked with him. Okay. Acquaintance. Well, not a good friend. Acquaintance. I've played poker with him. He's a very nice guy. I did his play right out of college. Which one? A Few Good Men. Oh. I toured the, so it was on Broadway. And then when I graduated college, it was uh, starting the tour of A Few Good Men, a uh, six month tour. And we toured uh, all over the country. And I met him then. And then I've met him a couple times since. Very nice guy. Well, wow. um, but, um, but you were in a few good men in the the touring production. Yes. And was that remarkable? Yeah, it was great. We, we Who were the, you? Were you the T. Cruz? <clears throat> no, I I understudied two of the you know two of the parts, and so I was a guy who f most nights just walked on stage and went blah, 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 and moved the furniture around. Okay. And then uh, I got to understudy uh, Lance. Corporal Dawson, the the one guy on trial, and then one time I had I I um uh the part that it was, it was smaller in the movie, but Noah Wiley played in the movie. I don't remember the characters' names. It was a long time ago. I don't remember much. Anyway, you were going to say something about Aaron Sorkin. I was. Uh, <laughs> all I know is Santiago and Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson and Kevin Bacon and Demi Moore. Those are the, Those are the only ones you know. <laughs> um, but Santiago is the character's name. Santiago is the one who's murdered. And, yeah, and then everybody else that. were the actors who played the characters. Well, you think Santiago was actually murdered and then they made a movie? No, but you said all I remember was Santiago. And then, and then you're like <laughs> oh, Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, <laughs> Demi Moore, Kevin Bacon. Those aren't cat. Those aren't. That's right. That's Santiago true. doesn't know those guys. They, you're right. <laughs> Santiago. <laughs> Santiago. What if I did know who played Santiago? Bert Halbrim. Who did play Santiago? It's a small part. Yeah, but sometimes those small parts, it's the first part for like the uh, the next big thing. Like Tom Cruise in uh, in uh, in Taps. Okay. Or uh, know, uh, Endless uh, Love. Uh, Doesn't he have a part in Endless Love? T. Cruise? T. Cruise? Somebody just said you see T. Cruise's Ding Dong in one of those early movies. 
Remember who said what? Kevin Smith said all the right uh, moves. Well, let's just say it has a home at the buffet. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Is it all the right moves? Where do we see Tom Cruise's ding He Kevin said, you see full frontal, bang, there it is. It's either taps or all the right moves. Can we find, is there any way to? Yeah, Katie has the internet. <laughs> and what is this internet? All I'm, all I'm familiar with is a juggling. book about juggling and, <laughs> and teaching myself how to ride my unicycle on my, on my driveway. What, <laughs> there's an internet? What does that do? The thought of you in the 80s, <laughs> perched up on a unicycle, just kind of learning it yeah. in Falling, your driveway. Getting up, putting, doing it again. I mean, look. To the point where I had like saddle sores. Of course you did. What else do you do during the day? You just do, you, you find things to I worry yourself. a little bit about the lack of boredom. My daughter said she was bored for the first time in her life. And that's good. That's pretty good. She made it to four. But she and and all of her feelings are welcome. But I was like, oh my god, yeah. I mean, she's got a lot of stimuli, a lot of like flashing. That's it. That, my, like my my kids, my no son's, unicycles for her. My son's fifteen. My daughter's thirteen. And it's yeah, it's hard to. I guess their their boredom is to just like, you know, get into the phone and just yeah. do the thing. But I I I do wish that there was times that they were bored. And just were just and, dealt with and didn't have that and just wrote it out. Yeah, that's why you have to get like a cabin in the but woods. But they sometimes they like they'll do art or like they'll they'll paint or they'll you know um my you know work out or they'll do something to kind They're of working out already. My son is yeah he's thirteen fifteen. Oh, he's the fifteen. Yeah, he's he's taller than me at this point. When do you, you this is like you're in your John Ham, you're full Ham. I don't know what that means. Deal with it. <laughs> What does that mean? I'm saying you look better now to prepare. I love Party Down. I just, I almost as well, a, a new, new season's coming out. In, oh, is it really? In, uh, the first quarter of next month. Edit I that out. But um, that's great. I'll edit all of that out. But I thought I would watch. I typed in Best of Ken Marino. Oh, right. You do, I'll edit all that out. That's it's a joke. I, I, I typed in Best of Ken Marino. The first thing that came up was Party Down clips of you. And I watched them. And this I was is like, how you researched. This is part of the research. This is part of your research. I also read your Wikipedia page. Okay. That's, I, I, and personal life was wanting. So let's add to it. <laughs> <laughs> personal life was, it was like written by a drone. It was like, Ken Marino is married with two children. It was like, how often do he you was go in and delete that? In 19, so yeah. <laughs> he one time saw Tony Robbins pick up a horse that he thought that was chocolate. The whole thing whole. Hold on. Well, I'm gonna have to imagine this as a cartoon later because <laughs> it's gushing. <laughs> oh God, horses! So much blood. It's a lot of blood. You horses. don't think about when you're on a horse. It's That's all be I think about. I think about riding like a giant, uh, like a it's like a sack a, of like blood. a sack of blood. It's like a horse skin bag of yeah, blood. Yeah, you see all those veins in their in their back legs. All so I'm thinking much. about is all that blood just coursing through their veins, and I hope Tony Robbins isn't nearby. <laughs> and they're huge donkey dongs. <laughs> I watched you on Party Down, uh -huh. and which I've seen through many times. Love it. Uh, Thank you so much. You're wonderful on it. And I thought, Jesus Christ, uh, Ken Marino is in his John Hamm. You look better now than you did that. that. How long ago was that? 12 years ago. Who looks better than they did 12 years ago? Kenny Marine. John Hamm. Well, Jay Hamm. That's that's where we got the you're in your full John Hamm. Yeah, yeah. So and now your son's working out. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> I'm trying to I say, stay on ham. Are, the, are the Marinos <clears throat> hamming it up all the time? Yeah, are yeah. they uh, uh no, no. What, what's your question? What? I'm what wondering got? what changed. What what have you done in your life? People like these types of things. I feel like you, you figured something out. About my looks, about my sure. physical. Yeah, uh, it seems uh, like you found a nice cruising altitude. Uh, your physicality has part to do with that, but what have you figured out in the past twelve years that that, well, that has balanced your life? I, I've thought and of, your physicality I've thought too. Of, uh, that balanced my life and your physicality. I, let's get petty. Well, I, you weren't talking about John Ham when you said I'm all John Ham. You weren't talking about my life. That's right. But then it seemed like you prickled a little bit at the physical uh, wellness <laughs> section of this yeah, chat. Yeah, but I want you to, so, but I want to know, I want to be clear on the question because yeah, I'll how, answer either. How did you babe it up so hard, dude? 
I don't know what that. You know what it means. What I what I will say Did is. Did you order the baby up on the <laughs> Colonel Santiago? I thought he was a colonel. <laughs> colonel Jessup. That's uh, 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 Jack Nicholson's name. Oh, right. 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 Colonel Jessup. Do you know he improvised You Can't Handle the Truth? No, he didn't. That was a riff. Um, the what I found was in my twenties mm. uh, when I was uh, living in New York and I was doing the state and um, uh, uh, there was a lot of um, excessive eating and drinking and hanging out and debauchery. I heard you befriended people by walking around with a milk crate filled with liquor. That who told you that? Wikipedia.com. That's not true. It's not true? I mean, did, no, did, well, I mean. It is did, true. Did, did Wikipedia tell you that? It's on Wikipedia. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, that is true. I mean, <laughs> so there was some bad behavior, or not, not healthy not, behavior. Not, well, I'm just saying that the, so then in my 30s, I slowed down on that a little bit. And then in my 40s, I slowed down on it even more. And so I, it, it all evened out. You're saying your vice was, was chugging the rug? No, no. I'm saying that <laughs> you're asking why. Yeah, what did you figure out? What I figured out is is um, <clears throat> if you really get puffy in your 20s and then you get less puffy in your 30s and then you get less puffy in your 40s and then even less puffy in your 50s, you'll look sort of the same the whole way through. That's so funny because aging <laughs> is the same as drinking, basically. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I just, I, I aged myself up in my 20s and 30s yeah. so I could look better in my 40s and 50s. Like, I know you're kidding, but that is so fucking funny. <laughs> I know you're kidding, but that is, I mean, that is, it's like, <laughs> you could write a book <laughs> about Am that. I kidding? Like, <laughs> like, look like shit in your 20s so that when you cool it, right, you can look like you did in your 20s, right. but you'll always look like the same pretty good shit. That's right. Pretty good shit by Ken Marino. That's it. There you go. That's pretty good. Nuts. So was that your vice of choice? What? Chugging the rug. No, I mean, you know, uh, my vice of choice was, was, um, rice wine, just trying to, yeah, <laughs> rice wine. No, I just, um, I don't know if I had a vice of choice. I, I enjoyed <laughs> no, my right? 20s <laughs> being a single or, you know, being a young individual living in Manhattan. Uh, hanging out with a bunch of my friends, um, I I enjoyed that time. <laughs> for some reason, that felt so guarded, and it made me feel bad for asking you. No, I mean, I, I, I had, there's no, there's nothing specific. I'd like, it's not like I'm like, oh, you know, I went crazy, and you I didn't, didn't go nuts. No, you just consistently. I ate whatever Manhattan yeah. had to offer. I went to uh, the bars that uh, I was uh, able to go to in my twenties because I was no longer uh, yep. uh, underage, and uh, that's the that's that you know that's what you do. What about uh, weed weed smoking? You used to do that? Um, I did. I did back then, um, <laughs> and now now that it's like uh, legal, I got so excited about it, and I would go to the the places and. Um, buy stuff and then I'm like uh, I don't I don't have the, the time with kids it. and I'm like I'm also it's just not it's not uh, something I particularly uh, crave or want like I I guess I enjoyed it's, I don't even know if I enjoyed it back then I just you did it and then you know it was fun for like movies to go see movies <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know. I loved it. I loved every part of it. Maybe I was feeling parent Ken that I was like, you ever do PCP? Like, I don't know. Uh, you know, my son is 15. He's doing a deadlift right now. You ever see a ghost? Have I ever seen a ghost? Or, well, you're thinking about it. Well, uh, what's the or? Or have you ever experienced anything that you can't explain? Like something like super weird where you're like, well, that defies the laws of reason. See, what it, is it revisionist history? Like when you when you somebody you think something happened, but it really is like maybe something that happened to your parents or your friend. That's, I feel like when I was a kid in our home, apparently 
either I saw it or somebody saw <laughs> a ghost at the top of the stairs. But I don't really recall, and it didn't affect me uh, too deeply. Um, I do. I mean, if we could put that story in a capsule, it's the least reliable. It started with like, you know, revisionist history. Here's the thing. Here's here's, here's the thing. Here, here's the th here's the thing, Pete. You know, I, I don't. Did. I don't remember much. Okay. Um, uh, it's all super foggy. <laughs> all of it, um, except for like little moments. I, you know, like there are people who remember everything, right? Yes. All through their life. And it's like, it, they they can call back every single moment. Joe Truglio is a person. Uh, do you know Joe? Have you yeah. ever met Joe or done him, uh, to, uh, interview him on the show? He can kind of break down every moment. moment. I can't. My wife also. Eric Oyama um, is somebody who can kind of be like, this is what happened, this is what happened. You know, like, I'm just, it's all a big f uh, fog to me. I understand, I'm the same way. But I think, and I think it has to do with approaching, s surviving as an actor in this town or just in this industry, it sort of bled over into my just, personal life or my existence of who I am for better or for worse. Meaning that um, you have so much rejection in, in this town, right? And over the years, especially early on, a lot of like no's. And the way to move forward is to let it go, right? To forget about it. Right, I've been with you since you started. I, I, I had a sense this is where you were going, and I feel very strong with the same right? way you're going. Yeah. So, so in order to do that, you have to have a certain you have to create a certain mindset for yourself to be like that happened, that negative thing happened, or that experience happened, negative or positive, but I didn't get the job. Um, I'm going to let that go. Yes, and I'm going to forget about it. I'm not going, I'm going, I'll try to ex uh, remember things that will help me moving forward, um, little pieces of it, but ultimately I cannot remember it, otherwise it will destroy me. You're the guy from Memento and you're just writing the helpful bits, like <laughs> learn your lines for the audition That's or right. whatever, but you're not writing, they all laughed in my face. Right, Or right, whatever, because right, right. it doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve me. And there's two much static negativity the odds are so in insurmountable now i'm yeah, having a silver near right uh <laughs> <laughs> insurmountable see we all have it kenny you're not you're not you're that's not a silver <laughs> come on anyway look Let's not let's stay on point because this is good. This is interesting. This is interesting. Or maybe maybe it's no, just it interesting to you and I. I don't know. One of your techniques for show business is take what's useful and leave the rest because you got to forget. Burn it. Not even just leave it. Forget it. Like delete it. Delete it from your brain. Right. Yes. So over the course of and so it definitely affected. Um, not even talking about personal life yet. It affected how I would approach good news in the industry. Which would be, tell me I got a, I got the job, the the big job. You're going to be in the reboot of uh, Star Wars: A New Hope. Oh, that's great, right? Yeah. That, so I so I somehow you've even it out. I've even it out. Like Can because I tell you something because else? I wouldn't get upset about the bad Let news. Let me give you something else. But you're not going to be in the reboot of Return of the Jedi. Okay. I knew it. You salty dog. So so all of a sudden. The way I was able to survive here, in, not here in this room, but in this town, was to not have high highs and low lows. That's what uh, Conan, he has a, he used to wear it. I don't know if he still does. He has a bracelet that says um, steady bass hum or low bass hum or something. He was like, I don't want highs and lows. I just want a steady like just a normal, yeah. even experience. Well, I want to get back to that. But to finish my point is what happened was mm. in in using that technique or whatever it is, it bled into my personal life. And I just 
my, in, this is how I think of it. And this is why I don't remember shit. Is, is I just, I just, I, I live, I experience the thing and then it just sort of goes away. And somehow it infected my personal kind of memory as opposed to just kind of the approach to kind of surviving in this town. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. To the Conan point you made. Oh, I have a follow-up on that. Oh. Is that ever not, I won't forget the Conan thing. Is that ever not helpful? Professionally or, or personally? Personally. It's terrible that, personally. Yeah, that's what I'd like to hear about. It's it's, it, it's what we're talking about. I was yeah. like, I don't, you ask me questions about like. You ever see a ghost? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I think, maybe, I don't remember. I don't, you know, like, unless I saw it like on my walk here from my car. Right. I don't. But like, you run into people and you don't know how you met them. Does that happen constantly? <sighs> yes, all the time. I I was just in Montreal and I was talking to Val. I was like, have you ever been to Montreal with me? I couldn't remember. And the answer was, I, the answer was yes, like, Ken. Yeah, yeah. And she wasn't upset about it because she knows how my mind works. But she was like, yeah, remember. And she reminds me, but I need that help to find the breadcrumbs. And then I remember, but like, it's super important that people that I love know that one of the ways I love people is not remembering everything we've ever done together. No, it's <laughs> showing your love for them in the moment. That's right. And I, yeah, so that is, yeah, for sure. I take pictures, not even for posting, just to remember stuff. I take pictures and then I go back and I'm like, holy shit, we went to, my family went to France? Like, I'm like, <laughs> if I didn't look at those pictures, it, is, it's, it like, it would have come back in some sort of conversation if somebody yeah. talked about France, but like, you know, it was not, it wasn't even in there. Until I saw pictures, then I was like, this wave of like, yes, shit. So the, like one of the, the things down, I love like about like these, download. these <laughs> a thousand pictures, the thousand pictures that you can take on your phone, like all the time. Yeah, I try to do it all the time because it, it really does help me remember. Yeah, where the people where they the made souvenirs for? What's that? Where the people they made souvenirs for? That's right. Um, can I just change the trajectory of that? Yeah. Uh, AC, because it's because I, I don't know if you've noticed, I have some holes in my shirt. How do we do it? Uh, swing. I think swing is what it's doing now. If you, if I hit this, <laughs> this is good TV right here. This is great. There we go. How's that, that? Is that right on you? No, that's over here. That's great. Okay, we did it. Um, <clears throat> couldn't relate more. All right, so so so. You, you, the Conan thing, right? Oh, you, you you don't want high highs and low lows. I can I to reload you back into yeah. that topic. I just got a call now, just, just now? now. Actually, my manager's assistant has figured out that my phone's always on do not disturb, so they just call me twice. I was like, it's probably Val. I gotta go. Something's wrong with the baby, and I just see my management company, and I'm like, I know it's just. Um, they want to know if at the orgy you want melons. <laughs> there's two things. There's three things now. Three questions. One. One. Why are they do? Why tell them stop? Tell them to stop doing that. Oh, I'm going, two. Yeah, I'm going to. I never knew that existed on the phone. And three. Do are they really leaving you messages about the melons in the orgy? I'm sure that whatever it is is not important. Is not super important. Meaning, I'm doing a podcast. This Which is, they know you do. They they don't know when I'm doing it, but here it is. I can I can get back one of my favorite Chance the Rapper lyrics. My lawyer says it's urgent. I'm gonna call him in an hour. All it's right. one of my favorite lines. Wait, say that again. My lawyer says it's urgent. I'm gonna call him in an hour. <laughs> I just love that. Chance has so many lyrics that are just about like uh, the industry can't stop me. I don't take seriously what all of you people take seriously. I'm just having fun. I'm just making art. Like, fuck off. And I listen to it and I'm just like, how did all of this fun of show business get turned into like, Ken, we need to know, are you bringing a plus one to the SAG Awards? Like, <laughs> how did we get from you meeting David Wayne on your first day at NYU, Wikipedia, to that? That, that is, I love, you, you have, you've answered my question, the greatest lesson you've learned about show business, which is burn it all to the ground the moment it's done. Yeah. Which I'm going to actually maybe over flatter and say, that's in the Tao Te Ching, and say, do your work and be done with it, the only way to serenity. That's that's a great, great line. So there you are. 
being wise. Um, what is your greatest lesson that you would? Oh, is the Dao 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 De Ching? Dao De Ching. Uh, is there a book, the Dao of Pooh? Yes. Is it about that? I bet it's about how the lessons of Winnie the Pooh are very Taoist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of like Tao, and then they did Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. Right, 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 right. But they're all kind of like, be like instead of the Holy Bible, you're like the Holy Cookbook. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Pardon the interruption, friends. This episode is brought to us by our friends at The Perfect Gene which I've been wearing on tour all week. You know why? Because I'm always wearing the perfect jean because they're the perfect pant. I don't understand how it's 2023 and people are still walking around in uncomfortable pants. It used to be the only option if you wanted something stretchy, uh, you had to wear like what, linen or uh, yoga pants? I can't pull that off. I'm not Sting, it looks stupid. So enter the perfect jean, which is not only the best fitting pair of pants that I own. It is also the best looking pair of pants I own. I would put them, and I have put them against, designer jeans, weird custom jeans that I bought at some strange denim company. Screw that. The perfect jean looks way better and feels way, way better than any other pair of pants I've ever spent way too much money on. And they're not that expensive. They're not expensive at all, in fact. They're the best pants I've ever owned. I haven't taken them off since they arrived. I just rotate between my blues, my dark blues, my grays, and my blacks. I have four or five pairs of perfect jeans, and that is it, because I found my perfect pant, and I'm not looking back. What's the secret? There's soven, woven, soven into it. 2% spandex, 2.5% rayon for extra comfort and movement that your man parts require. That's right. This jean stretches so your nuts ain't crushed, thereby providing the only true home for your bone. They're super soft. You might even forget that you're wearing pants. They're so soft. They're clinically proven. I can't say that. They are softer than a baby's butt, in my opinion. That's anecdotal. Softer than a baby's butt. <laughs> and best of all, they're not khakis. Fuck your khakis and spare your nuts. The perfect jean for the perfectly imperfect men, just 60 bucks. 60 bucks when you use promo code WEIRDO at checkout. Liberate your lower limbs with the one and only Perfect Gene. Whether you're working with lemons or lentils, a three-leaf clover, or a big ol' honk and eggplant, the Perfect Gene has you covered. Take a peek at www.theperfectgene.nyc. That's the perfect J-E-A-N.nyc. And use code WEIRDO for 25% off at checkout. Do your lower half a favor. Look good and feel good and show your support of this show. We're also brought to us by our friends, a total game changer, Ritual, multivitamins, and pro, pre, and post biotics. Every podcast has a pooper. That's why we invited you. Yeah, we're talking about poop. With Ritual Symbiotic plus a three-in-one clinically proven prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic designed to help support a balanced microbiome, we are spilling the beans and eating them too. That means there's no more shame in your gut game. You guys know we talk a lot about gut health on this show. It has a lot to do with your well-being, your overall feeling of wellness, as well as there's more and more studies coming out that your, your stomach, your gut, is basically like another brain. You have to take care of it. And so much of our soil and our food is just devoid of the things it used to have in it, and we need to supplement. Not only do I take Ritual's multivitamin for men every single day and when I went to the doctor they told me my vitamins were off the chart and as a mostly vegan person that is an incredible feat indeed I start every day with this three-in-one prebiotic postbiotic and probiotic that has two of the world's most clinically studied probiotic strains to support the relief of mild and occasional digestive discomforts like bloating gas and diarrhea let's just say it it's helping with bloating, gas, and diarrhea. Why include a postbiotic? Well, it provides fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and supports a healthier gut barrier. That means it's win-win. And a delayed release capsule, just like their multivitamin, is designed to help survive the harsh condi conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon, which is the ideal place for probiotics to grow and thrive. It's an all-in-one single nested minty capsule. It tastes delicious. Minty capsule with no refrigeration needed. So it's easy to take with you when you travel. Proof, proof, uh, what's a proof in point? Case in point. I have it with me here in Portland. Ritual, when I leave, I have a lot of supplements that I take at home, but the only ones that I always take with me are my Ritual 
uh, uh, Symbiotic Plus and my Ritual Multivitamin. So Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. It's time to listen to your gut. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash weird to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash weird to add, to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today and show your support of this show. All right, everybody, let's get back to it. Uh, what's the greatest lesson you've learned about acting? Because I, I want to make sure you hear this, Dad. <laughs> I'm just kidding because you were looking at that. It's totally fine. It was a reference to my dad not listening to me. Um, <laughs> I think you're a phenomenal actor. You're one, you're one of a kind. You are constantly working, and I know why what you do no one can do exactly what you do like you do it, and it's phenomenal and it's hilarious. What what is what is some of the great advice you've gotten about acting? Maybe from Aaron Sorkin. I'm just kidding, but like, <laughs> what do you try to hold in your mind or not hold in your mind? But think about before you're doing a scene, before you're performing on stage or in a movie or whatever it may be. Do you like acting? I do like acting. Do you? Why do you like acting? Because it's play. It's playing. It's listening. When you're doing it, nothing else is happening, so it's very tunnel visiony, you know. Especially if it's a small scene. If it's a scene with like thirty people, like a big dinner, and all I have to do is here, here, like right, that's, right. that's not my favorite. No. But if I'm in a scene like the show I did, Crashing, a lot of scenes where it's just Pete and one other person talking. Right. Because that's the kind of stuff I like to do. Uh, so I like. But that. do you like playing characters, or you like playing yourself? Every character I do is is I'm still in the a early version stage. Of it's a version of me, yeah. Still, I. I've, but you've also done uh, like sketches where you play sketches. I do bigger things, characters, and like, I like uh, that like a lot. Personalities, and I stuff, like right? that a lot. But finding that like <clears throat> something that would work in between, like a sketch where you can do like a big, big choice and nobody questions it. Right. I just did a guest star on something, and I was doing something, and the director came up and they were like, "It's getting a little Bill and Ted's," and I was like, "This is the risk. This is why I never want to." And they were right, by the way. They protected me but that's why i never want to make like a big what's going on like something like that right because i don't want to be embarrassed right but but tell me about that what do you do when you create a character are you are you worried about being embarrassed and do you like acting i always am worried about being embarrassed but what i've learned was that's that's the place you need to go to create something that is true to you like you can't you have to be aware of that but basically i like to to push it and make not big choices but strong choices um, and try to, with the tools that I have or whatever, or the knowledge I have from the years of doing what we do, uh, to try to ground it. Because my feeling is, as long as it's coming from a, I'm going to use real place, <laughs> quotes. Um, seems so dirty now that yeah, I Yeah, it's very that. dirty, right? Um, <laughs> Let's do this. Real place, <laughs> you know. As as long as you're grounding it and, and and making it as you know true to you as you as you possibly can, knowing that it's all make but we're all, it's all make believe. Um. Then then strong choices or big choices are fine. Um, Have you, can you tell me a time when somebody came in and was like, "Kenny boy, uh, let's tone it down." <sighs> Nobody ever went. Maybe take out the fake teeth. <laughs> No, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, well, I don't, I, <laughs> I'm sure, again, I mean, this goes back to the other thing we were talking about. Burn I'm sure people ground. have said that to me and I've made the adjustments, but then I let that go and I didn't get all like heard about it that mm. they thought maybe the choice I made was too big. My job is to come in and create a character and a, and and do the you know respect the lines and respect the text, but also bend it to in the way that I can only bend. I always think about acting as I, I think scenes are music, and I think that we are supposed to be you know 
musicians of some sort, right? And we're supposed to, so like, and and it's sort of jazz, right? So like, it's like, you're going to bend the notes differently than I bend the notes, but the way you bend the notes aren't wrong. It's just that you your interpretation of it that is grounded and real to you from your experiences in life. And that's how I approach um, the the text and 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 scenes where I, I'll look at them and I'll try to like respect what the writer's intentions were, and recognize what the structure of the jokes are if it's a comedy, um, or what the structure of the scene is and what how I'm supposed to serve the story. But then I also want to bend it to make it mine because mm. um, I can. Nobody else can do what I can do and nobody else can do what you can do because you're you and I'm me. And so if I can stay true to making it truthful and believing my choices, then it will be interesting. Mm -hmm. And it might not be the right thing. The director might not like it or the writers may say, that's not what we had in mind. Um, but I have found that more times than not, with that confidence, usually it's liked by the writers and it's liked by the director. Yeah. Um, I really admire that. I'm not just saying that. I think that's really cool. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think, right? So, Do you base it on a person when you do it? Like, I, I'm really new at the idea of like, I'm going to build a character and the closest <clears throat> I can come is I go like, well, my brother sort of holds his body like this and... My friend uh, Ernie, kind of when he talks, he does that. Are you just kind of going with your instinct and the words? I think it's a bit of both. I think it's so. So did, I mean, like, did you study acting at, at some point? Not really. So a I went a little bit, a little bit. And what and what was the philosophy or the teacher or the technique or whatever? My teacher, my professor, Norm Jones, had us go out and watch someone walking that we didn't know and then mimic that walk and then build a character based on that walk. And I really wish I had done that because I just did a walk of somebody I remembered in high school. And then I, I so it was based on someone I had seen, but just from my memory. And then I turned it into a cop which that walk wasn't the walk of a cop. Like looking back, I was like, that was completely wrong. And I just kind of picked. Well, but a if, even if you pick somebody me. on the street. Oh, so you were supposed you knew it was supposed to be a cop? No, I what I did was I backed it into something I was comfortable with. Instead of being as vulnerable as the exercise wanted me to be, which was like pick somebody, walk like them, be in their body, you know, and and try it on. And then let their body as you interpret it, they're gone now dictate what do you think they do for a living how do you think they talk how do you think right. they smile how do you th think they laugh i was too embarrassed and scared to really do the exercise but that was something i remember doing in an acting class and i wish i'd taken it more seriously what was yours well i, I just feel like the way you build a character if that is you know like i, I like I, I went to I went to NYU and I studied, you know, this is where I met the state guys, but I, I wanted to be an actor. I was des desperately wanted to be an actor. And I never thought I wanted to be a comedian. I just thought I wanted to act. And so the four years I was there, I was doing the state. We were doing shows, but um, I was also studying at Lee Strasberg Institute, right? And they, you had to pick up, or they put you in a place. And his whole thing is like working from the inside out, right? And then there was Stella Adler is working from the outside in, right? So create a character, create a walk. Cre what are they wearing? What are their shoes, right? That's one approach, right? And then Lee Strasberg's thing is like the sense of memory of like where, you know, where is it coming from? Like what is the, how do you get to those feelings through, you know, some sort of deeper emotional thing that you've experienced and how do you kind of f figure out a way to bring that back on a consistent, in a consistent way or when you need it in front of the camera or on stage every mm -hmm, night or whatever mm -hmm. the thing is. And all of, and a lot, there were, I have a lot of friends who were like, all that, all that is bullshit. Just pick an intention, go up and say your line. And I'm like, it might, a lot of it might be bullshit or it might not speak to you, but like it's all, it, I don't think it's all bullshit. I think it's, uh, it's all Interesting, and if you can find things that speak to you, and 
you know, the, some of the Strasberg stuff spoke to me and some of the Adler stuff spoke to me and some of the Meisner stuff spoke to me. All that shit's, you know, and I just took little things from that and little things that I experienced. And and so I don't know. I don't, I like at this point, I just, I I feel like you just want to read the text, see what the, see what the writer's, what their intention is or try to interpret what their intention is, try to respect that. And then have, feel something like in, like, you know, when you're going back to the music, like when you're playing jazz, you know what the notes are, but you're going in places that you're just, you feel like are right, right in the moment. Mm -hmm. So to give yourself the freedom to do that while making one or two specific choices about a character, either Uh externally or internally. Right, saying okay, I, I'm I'm going to find something that kind of makes me go to a place of whatever pure happiness or sadness or m- melancholy or whatever the thing is, and I'm going to you know the party down. I, I I feel like the guy is you know a recovering alcoholic, and I I want him to have a military kind of buzz cut because it shows that he's in charge and he's also showing him when he looks in the mirror that he's to stay on course <laughs> right those are the so those are the that you know, was your like, choice the haircut yeah oh wow and so i can't picture that character without that haircut you know yeah I mean? I mean i mean yeah. it was but but it was you know then they could have said no we don't want you to do that and i would have been like okay and then i would have picked something else but they were like yeah you could do that so <laughs> That's brilliant. So, you know, I just, you, you pick a couple of things and then you commit to them. That's <laughs> such a fucking long-winded way of I loved every part of it. Are you not acting. That was great. That's I so loved funny. it. And is there great advice you've been given? Is there something that people, it could be simple. It doesn't have to be great, but like a great piece of advice you got about acting or about comedy? I mean, I love to watch old clips of comedians and actors talking about acting and mm-hmm. comedy mm-hmm. and the approach to it. And the thing that I've always, and people always say, comedy and drama are different. And I, I always feel like they're not as different as, I don't think they're enormously different. I think you just need to kind of commit to what the text is and, make choices and um so i i like I, I guess i feel like um for comedy i just feel like as long as you're and i don't know who said it or whose advice it was but like treat it like a drama mm. and you know i'm aware of having done sketch comedy I was laughing because I was thinking about drama. I didn't want you to think I was laughing at your answer. I was thinking about the new Lord of the Rings show and how dramatic it is. Right. And how funny it would be if you were just like, run to the woods. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) it is funny. Like, if that was in a comedy, same performance. Same performance. It would be so funny. But when I watch it in drama, I always think about the boom guys over there and someone's like, by the sword of Ithriel. And I'm just like, this is hilarious yeah just when you watch a drama you go like it's okay this it's is okay what we this want. is what this is i guess this, this is, is how they talk and <laughs> if it's if it's a dramatic thing you buy it and if it's a comedic thing you buy it and i i don't know i mean i uh, just make sure they buy it you just make you just make it truthful but oh I, what i'm saying is like but, you know, yes, in a comedy, you might want to make some bigger choices, but you still have to commit to them and make sure that they're not just for the the laugh. Yeah. Like you have to make sure that they're grounded in some sort of truth for the character. Well, when I met you with Ben Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, I told you, which is true, that Wanderlust, which you wrote and are in, uh, is one of my favorite movies of all time. And when I see your face, I think of you going... A very big moment, if we could talk about it. You're talking about how you're in the porta potty business. And for people that haven't seen the movie, you're sort of representing to Paul Rudd's character just sort of the, the grotesqueness of the American dream, how you can get so up your own ass thinking that if you make money, it's good. 
And if you have a mansion, you're happy, and you you turn a blind eye to the, the Michaela, who I love dearly, yeah. is clearly the on the edge. Like she's she's crying for help. She's going yeah. to explode. She's suicidal. She's suicidal. <laughs> exactly. And you're over there thinking you're the winner, yeah. like you're Captain America because you're a millionaire. And as you're explaining this to Paul, which eventually talk about serving the story, motivates him to go to a commune, which is brilliant. In fact, just like a good hero's journey, they go to the commune and then they leave. This is called resisting the call. It's a great mechanism. You want them to stay. You think they're going to stay. But of course, everybody resists the calling. They resist truth. And then they go and stay with you. And you have the moment, this is the moment I really wanted to talk about, where you go like, every time you see a porta potty, that's money in my pocket. And you go, cha-ching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cha-ching. That's a big swing, and it's hilarious. Is that a good example of what you mean by like sometimes in comedy you make a bigger play? Yeah, <laughs> I guess I knew it was, but I just I wanted mean, to sure. talk about it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I knew the tone and tenor of the yeah. of the piece that we were doing, mostly because you know Dave and I wrote it. Yeah, and so I knew that would fit in the tone of the movie. Right, that and helps. so. Um, I knew that that was in the ballpark. Now we may not have used it because you know we may, and ed editorially we may have been like uh, too much in that moment. Yeah. But I knew I wasn't going to be like completely off base. But even so, even if you, I think you need to in acting, be willing to be uh, to take those risks and be willing to fall on your face. Which is not, which is such a cliche thing to say. I'm not, not saying not anything cliche. new. I think you are saying something new. But but I, um, here's the thing that is tough to do early in your career. It's hard to do it because you're so, because if you fuck up, you feel like you're never going to get another chance. Whereas now in my career, right out of the gate, I'm going to go do what I think is the right choice as opposed to... Uh, being a little hesitant to to do it, Re respecting the text, respecting the the type and tone of the show that I'm on, but I'm going to take a big swing. That doesn't mean it's a big choice, but I'm going to take a, I'm going to drive the scene the way I think the scene should be kind of uh, driven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's up to the director and the producer to be like, no, or great. Let's modulate that. Let's, you know, because it's because you are vulnerable when you're yeah. in front of the camera and you're, you know, you're just giving stuff out there. And so there are times when I've done stuff and nobody came and corrected me. And then I looked at it and I went, ooh, different. It should have been for a, maybe a different movie. But like I, you know, and then it's but, your job to take that risk. It's your, it, but you, yeah, it's your job to to kind of. Give them something, and then they can. You gotta trust yourself, but you also have to trust that they know what they want, and so they'll come in and mold it if they need to. Or yeah. they'll be like, "Great, that's great." And what was the writing process for Wanderlust like? Dave and I wrote several movies, um, uh, but we lived. Uh, we wanted to write something together, but we were living on separate coasts and we decided to um we did this thing where we would lock ourselves in a uh a room for seven days straight and we work for 12 hours a day and the goal was to come out with a, a first uh draft of a script in seven days in seven days and we did that for the 10 which we did and then we did that for wanderlust and we did a version of that at a necessity because it was already in pre-production and going, but we did a big rewrite of role models. David was already attached to direct, um, slightly different than the other two. Uh, but we would lock ourselves in a room for 12 hours straight, seven days straight. And, and the goal was to uh, come out with a, 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 a first draft. And then of course it would take a year to rework it, you know, finesse, uh, finesse it. But we had that hard copy, which is the hardest thing to do. The hardest thing to do, right? And then you and you could feel it, and it, it motivated you. You're like, oh, okay, we have a story. Now, how do we make it 
really good. Yeah. What are the, we have the bones, now let's add some meat to it, the proper meat to it. Yeah. So we did that with the 10, and then we did that with uh, 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 Wanderlust, and then we did that with another movie that we didn't make, but. Um, so 12 hours. 12 hours a, room, a day, literally? yeah. Literally? Yeah, so we would. So we would get together because it was at a, it was at a necessity because we weren't able to, uh, you know, we were both working on other things. So we're like, okay, let's take this week, put it on the calendar, and we're going to bang out a first draft, and then we can go back and forth on, you know, whatever. FaceTime. So you guys would do this together, like in, in, in the room, in, in, in the, the room, room together. together. No David writer's is, assistant. Just no, you guys. David is a faster typer than I am, and so David would mostly type. And we would just, and I would stand there and we would act stuff out and, and we would bang it out. Um, what, what is the phone and break and food policies here? The, uh, so the way it would work is um, uh, uh, we'd have lunch and there'd be food in the house to snack on. And um, that would be it. And so, you know, uh, we, we, the structure was the first two days the first day, come up with an idea, and within the first two days, have a outline wow. on a board. And then the next five days was twenty pages a day. Wow! And uh, that's what it would be. And so we would. I think it was the first twelve hours or the first six hours. Any throw anything up on the board, any ideas? Uh, it's a movie. This is the movie. And how about a movie about this? How about a movie about this? Then the second half of the day and this full next day was or, or at lunch. Decide what the idea is. Then, um, and we can come in with ideas. Like you know, it's not like yeah, don't come in. You know, so David that sounds pre planned. <laughs> yeah, you can. right. But yeah. but uh, but you know, and then but then we would go. Okay, let's now let's outline it. Okay, the first act is da da da. Here's some you know cards. Here's what happens in the second act and the third act. This is happens right, and then that's done by the and we write it out. We put it on the board, and that's done by the second day, and then twenty pages a day. Wow. And then at the end, it's what's fun is like you finish it. And it's a god. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess because, like, all the ideas you had for the last two or three days weren't represented in the first two. You know, two days of writing the twenty pages or the first forty pages, but you figured out your answers to the mm -hmm. first forty pages. So, like, so then we don't read it for a week or two, and then we both read it, and then we talk about it, mm -hmm. and then that's when we start the rewrite. And process. what made you want to do a movie about? A commune. We had watched some uh, s s Swedish movie <laughs> called Together. I don't know why that made me laugh. Some Swedish. Movie? It's called Together, and okay. it was really good. Uh -huh. And there was a a scene about an open a couple trying to be open, and the guy sort of being slightly uncomfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> But like being like, yeah, let's do it. And we use that as sort of a jumping off thing of like sort of a seed to kind of build the whole story around. Okay. That's fantastic. And in the original version of Wanderlust, which we shot, but then we went back and did reshoots um, because it didn't test well. Um, in the original version, and you can watch it in the Bizarro cut. I've seen the Bizarro uh, cut. Yeah. She sleeps with everybody at the commune. Mm -hmm. Like Jennifer sleeps with Justin and then everybody else at the commune, mm -hmm. including Alan Alda, who gives a wonderful speech to Paul when he's looking around for her. I don't know if you've seen that in the Bizarro Cup, but. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, people, when we tested it, were like, what? Jennifer Aniston sleeps with everybody in the commune and she's not, she doesn't feel bad about it? Like, <laughs> we're like, yeah, that's the, she's embracing the whole concept of the. Um, and so then, then we had to. <laughs> I could see how that might not test well. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, you think that people are going to love that? Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then we had to go back and make her have regrets about it. And then mm. also bring in a, 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 make Justin's character have a, instead of it just being a love triangle, he had to 
be trying to screw the commune over and sell it and not be really who he was. Oh, that was added. That was added, oh, which wow. to me is fine, and I get it. It reminds me of Adaptation. Have you seen Adaptation? Yeah. I love Adaptation, and when Charlie Kaufman in the movie realizes his movie isn't a good movie, and then it turns into a drug heist movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's one of the most brilliant movies ever because the movie itself has an existential crisis and yeah. goes like, and they're snorting the orchids. <laughs> right, you know? right, right, so it's, right. a le- it's not wrong. I've actually never bumped, as we say, on the fact that the commune guy was evil. Well, originally it was a smaller movie, right? And then we sold it to Universal and so it became a bigger movie. And their thing is like, you got to make it a bigger movie, essentially, right? right? right. Whereas when we did it, it was just a love triangle. It was like, Justin... Jen, you know, Jen's character goes there, embraces the philosophy, and Justin falls in love with her and then wants to possess her. And and so he's no longer embracing the philosophy. Like he's mm. he's not true to the philosophy of everybody loving everybody. Mm-hmm. Paul's character is Paul's character who's like, whoa, I I, you know, he just wanted to have a little something on the side in that moment. He was titillated by it, but he didn't, the philosophy never spoke to him. Right. He just was like, hey, wouldn't it be great if I can sleep with Malin? You know, like that was his whole thing. Right. Um, And so it was just a love triangle thing. But then you had to make it a bigger movie. Then we had to make it a bigger movie. And so he became a guy who was trying to screw over the whole commune as opposed to a guy who was just so deeply in love with, Jennifer, Jennifer's character, that he just wanted to possess her and, and steal her from Paul. I see. I love it. And I need it. So, you, well, you got both versions. <laughs> you Here's a question for you. Yeah, buddy. And it might, it, I don't know how you do this. It might be just pressing pause. You have to pee pee? have to pee. You can put that right on your dinghy. <laughs> I don't mind it. I, I prefer it. <laughs> Um, let me ask you a question. Do you love doing this? This podcast? Yeah. I do. Why? Uh, well, a lot of the same reasons I love doing, doing acting. Which is? Usually, if I'm not getting double called from my manager's office, <laughs> still mad about it. <laughs> You're really upset no, about it. No, 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 but that, it takes me out of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was checking while you were peeing what it was. What was it? Nothing, nothing. 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 Uh, I like doing this because it's the only thing that's happening. It lets you get into that bubble of just like just another person, just listening to them. I like the hyper focus of it. I like the the excuse. I've said this a million times, but if when I met you, I said, would you like to hang out with me for two hours? You would have been like, no, that's insane. But well, if no, I said- that's not true though. Well, with you, because you're a real beloved sweetie, Petey. I call you a sweetie, Petey. But you're really sweetie. You're a sweet, you're a sweet relish. thanks you're a sweet pickle Mm -hmm. Um, so I love that you would do that and that you're living that kind of life but you know take anybody else Jason Alexander who I mentioned Kevin Smith right most people and I'm the same way if you were just like let's hang out for two hours just us and we'll just talk on a couch everyone would say no to that when I would say that's almost always exactly what we need is to like just be heard and to hear another person locked on in conversation for a little bubble of time where you're not looking at your phone and you're not thinking about anything else. I mean, what's better than that? Well, I hear you. And that's wonderful. For me, I just think of like, like my, uh, but it's not just you and I talking, right? It's, because it's shared? Because it's shared. You get over that pretty quickly, though. I mean, I did in, in waves, in moments during yeah. this. So I, I Just so you understand. Yeah, yeah, totally. Part of, I have, there is an anxiety hmm. that I have brought with me to this. Part of it was in the not sitting down bit, not wanting to start, right? <laughs> to avoid it's the... Uh, the act of opening up, or not even act, the the yeah. get, getting to a, a a place of opening up, and I think it's because 
I don't think I have anything valuable to say. <laughs> well, um, you're not alone there. Uh, um, when I asked, I told Jason Alexander it was two hours, and he was like, I don't think anybody wants to listen to me for two hours. Isn't that nice? Here you are. I, and I'm, I'm at least saying, yes, you do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Isn't that a nice little message in and of itself? Yeah. That I've enjoyed it the whole time. And you did have plenty to say for two hours. Yeah. So you did something you didn't know you had in you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know what you mean. I just, you have to understand I've been doing it for 10 years. So like you, you over 10 years, you do it so much that you stop worrying altogether about the reception. <laughs> How long have you... You think about the reception, but you don't worry about it. And, okay, well, I can ask you these questions later. Because <laughs> you, you're, I guess you're supposed to be asking questions. Um, it's, it's fine. It's all good. Um, so what were we talking about? Oh, you have the last couple questions. Are you ready? Are you excited? And by the way, anything you said that you want to take out, you're allowed to. For... No, I don't think I said anything that's... Really? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm but touch it, until gently. I go back and listen to it. You know. your knee gently. No, no, no. 99.9999% of people don't do that. I just want you to know that it's not. Some podcasts I do, I've been on podcasts where I'm like, they know they're making me uncomfortable or they're asking me to like comment or weigh in on something right. that I don't feel qualified or even appropriate to weigh in on. Right. But it's like the clickbait moment and they're like, what do you think about Will Smith? Or something like that. And I'm just like... Uh, those I hate. I don't like that. Yeah. But th that's why I mentioned. I've enjoyed this uh, thoroughly. Yeah. But I have, um, I think I, I think I, you know, get a little anxiety. I think talking about that is about, what you know. we're supposed to do. Yeah. I feel the, I feel the same way. It's not with podcasting anymore. There's a certain snowed in feeling to podcasts, especially established podcasts. Like the people who are listening are the people who are listening. We get, we get new people. But like it feels like a pretty safe and cozy listenership right. audience that I've come to trust and enjoy. And that that helps me not worry about it and, and not flare up with anxiety. Other things do make me flare up with anxiety. I'll worry about something I said to somebody at a party, for example, for a long time. I'm constantly doing this. I just took an ADD test and one of them was like, do you say things without considering the ramifications? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed, <laughs> just cackled while drinking wine out of a skull. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I have anxiety about a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this is, this is not one of them. Do you love acting? You asked me if I loved acting. I do love acting, yeah. yeah. I love acting. Um, I would be shocked if you were like, I don't, because you look like a I love a acting, I love enjoy. actors. Yeah, I love being around uh, just the whole kind of scene. Yeah, I love directing. Um, edit that out. Um, please uh, edit that out. No. Uh, <laughs> you no. do want to edit it? No, out. I. I um, no, I just saw that you've been directing more and more. Yeah, I. Um, but acting is something I've wanted to do since I was, I think, in third grade. Oh wow! And. Uh, it, which is weird, and it's something that I've sort of in third and fourth grade. I was like, I'm going to act, and I've never stopped mm. kind of heading in that direction. And I've been very, very lucky to have um, opportunities happen, and things happen and fall into place, and people at, at the, in the time at, during certain times when I was questioning it to come in and be like, no, keep doing it. Like I've just, it's just been. Who gave you that pep talk? I mean, there were people in high school, there were people in uh, college. Um, I feel like uh, when I came out here and there was, you know, there was a slow period, I had um, uh, a person kind of be there and give me the time and the, pep talk I needed to kind of continue going. Mm. Um, but I, 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 I just, I feel super lucky to be doing the thing that I've 
wanted to do since a, a, a very young age, and I love it. And so I, I think when I do it, that's the thing I always uh, – it, it feeds me when I do it is mm. my – like it's not, it's not a – it's it's not something I I've lost interest in or uh, or I d dislike. I I mean I really just I love getting to act with people mm -hmm. and um, is it's there fun. something you haven't done that you want to do? I think about like Adam Scott for example, just doing Severance, which was so cool. I could obviously see something like that, like a drama or even something scary with you. Um, you know what I mean, like chilling, like yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, it, yeah. I want to do it. I want to do whatever opportunity comes 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 to me. And I've had the luck to get involved in <laughs> because because a lot of the things I've done, a lot of the shows I've done have not gone a long time, right? Have not been successful in as far as like being picked up year after year. I've had the the luxury of doing a bunch of a bunch of things. Yeah. And a number of those things have become culty, right? Yep. And but but it's given me the opportunity to do whatever burning love and eastbound and down and uh, uh you know party down and um you know uh, uh a number number of different things and so uh, you know the other two that I'm on right now and um uh but they're because all comedies you didn't just they're get all, on. Oh, they're right. all comedies and and you know it'd be interesting to do something a little bit more dramatic but I'm you know if that comes along great if it doesn't fine yeah i'm not like a comedic actor who's like i need to do some drama i've right. always wanted that i mean it would be great, and I think I would have a blast doing it. I think I'd ho hold my own, but I don't. But I, you know, I'd like to do a western because they always seem like fun to do. You yeah, know? Like yeah, to, yeah. Like to yeah. enjoy being in like a, doing a, a story that involves cowboys and horses. You'd be a great cow. That'd be fun. <laughs> and Tony Robbins. Although you know, I, I don't think I have the uh, the um, mustache. No, the cowboy accent for it. Right? <laughs> Donkey. I think I have, I'm still too Long Island. Donkey is Long very, Island yeah. cowboy. Okay, there you go. Um, Long Island cowboy is the name of the movie. Long Island cowboy. You're perfect for it. Well, there was a there was a many years ago. Uh, James, do you know James Roday? Oh, he's not Roday anymore. Is it James R Rodriguez now? Mm -mm. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I did a show with him, and we would always talk about doing a movie called Dracula, Dracula Long Island. Dracula Long Island? Yeah, it. so it's just all long, like heavy, thick Long Island accents. Oh and Dracula is very Long Islandy, and <laughs> it's awesome, you know. <laughs> Try some of this blood, it's awesome. <laughs> Dracula in Long Island. We never did it. Well, here we go. This is the, the questions I ask everybody Have you ever almost died? Yes. Um, <laughs> Have at it. <laughs> so I was. I'd love to hear. I was uh, doing the state. You familiar with the state? Yeah. Okay. So the state um, was on MTV in the from ninety three to ninety five, and uh, in the middle of that, me, Mike Black, Mike Showalter, and Joe Latruglia decided we're going to drive between seasons. We're going to drive cross country. And, do, and so we rent. Uh, so we uh, got one of the uh, vans that they use. You know, um, what do you call the the the, the, the on set? That's the you know the fifteen passenger kind of van. Sure. We pulled out the back seat and put all our shit in it and made like a bed in the back and like you know we you know, we were just gonna drive. It was a passenger van and and we were gonna drive cross country four weeks five weeks. And we made it to. Austin, Texas, within a week. And we were going to go from Austin, or a couple of weeks, whatever, and we were going to go from Austin to uh, Vegas mm. in one drive, which Yikes. is a long drive, That's right? That's brutal. So we decided, okay, two of us are going to be able to drink. Black didn't drink. And one of us is going to just drive 
the night shift uh, uh, from Austin to where when till the sun comes up, and then Black will I'll wake up Mike Black, and he'll drive the next twelve hours, and we'll make it to uh, Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. I hate this. We'll make it to Grand Canyon. So I drove through the night. So we <laughs> so everybody so everybody hung out, partied in Austin. I drank a bunch of coffee. I partied. I hang out, hung out with everybody. I drank a bunch of coffee, and drove through the night, through, uh, and then woke up Mike Black when the sun came up. You did it. I did it. I got it. Nodding and, off. No. Strong. Up, strong. Woke up Black. You ready to drive? No. Are you ready to drive? Yeah, I just need a Dr. Pepper. So we pulled over at the gas station. He got a Dr. Pepper. He started driving. My, Joe Latrugla is in the passenger seat. Seat belt on. I'm in the seat behind, which is a long seat passenger van, right? With nothing in between me and the, the front. Not seat belt on. <coughs> Showalter is in the next big long seat. And so when he flies forward, he hits the seat in front of him. Black starts driving for about an hour. I go to sleep and I hear a scream and bumps and we're driving off the road. <laughs> and, uh, and we're running over these small trees, <laughs> running over small trees, but the car is on cruise control. So when it's hitting these small trees and like, you know, like they're just like folding over the small, like little, yeah, yeah, yeah. the car keeps going, boom, keeps like, trying to get to 70 again he's on cruise control at 70 and mike black like is oh and so he's preoccupied because when we hit something i fly forward and go and i turn my back and i go into the um the 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 uh, charger that back then we had a like a dvd charger that was sort of like a cigar that you put in the um, yeah, yeah, cigarette sure. thing. Yeah. And so that hit me in the seventh vertebrae. So I hit that push and, and, and black is holding me <laughs> and he's, and he's trying to like make sure I don't go flying all over the place. Cause we're just like driving like this. And so the road goes like this and he just like slowly drove off the side of the road and it's, and, it, and then there's a, so finally we hit a, there's like a ravine that goes, like that, uh, perpendicular to the road, and it's sort of like that. So the truck, so so it's like a V. So the 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 van goes into it, the front wheels hit it, blow out, and then it pops out, right? And then the van stops. So that's how we how that's how the car stopped. The van stopped. Are you in excruciating pain right now? I'm in shock. Yeah. We're all in shock. In fact, the car behind us watched it happen, and so is on the road about you know 50 yards from where where we split off with them. And they get out, and Mike Black gets out of the car and goes, "Good morning." And that's how that was his thing. Show Walter immediately starts smoking cigarettes with Joe. They're trying to figure out where the cigarettes are, and I'm feeling like something happened to my back. Um, but about 50 to 100 yards up, there's another ravine that goes not like that, but goes like that, like a square. Like a pit. Like a pit. So if we, if, if Mike had fallen asleep at the wheel. That's what happened? Yeah, Mike fell asleep at the wheel. Why didn't he hit the brakes? Because he was holding, he was saving me from... And he just was like, he didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh -huh. We, none of us knew what the hell was going on because we were all sleeping. <laughs> including the driver. Including the driver. <laughs> and so he was holding me. This is not a good ad for Dr. Pepper. So he. This all ends with He Dr. hits Pepper. the, so, so if it was a hundred yards further up, if he fell asleep just a little later. He would have. We would have went into that ravine and that ravine wouldn't have kicked us out, but rather we just would have stopped going at whatever, however 70, many yeah. miles an hour yeah, yeah. we were going. Wow. 50, 70, whatever the- And dead. And I would have went through the windshield. Wow. 
So I feel like that's a that's a great one. That's a that's the whole an time I'm wondering why Mike Black just doesn't go with the foot. Just just move to the left. You know, when you're holding on to your friend and making sure that he doesn't fly out the window, yeah. I feel like maybe he forgot to hit the brakes. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't mean, know what happened. Yeah, you know, let's call him up. They're right there. They're, they are. It's right next to the thing. But I, <laughs> I understand it all. Thank him so, so much. It did happen very fast. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happened. And then you wait for toe. And did you ever make it to the Grand Canyon? I went to. No, we. I went into a hospital in Sonora, Texas, which is like right on the uh, borderline, uh, border, which is right on the border between uh, Mexico and Texas. I think it was Sonora. 13-bed hospital. I was the only person in the hospital. I learned to uh, eat cream uh, cottage cheese and appreciate cottage cheese for the first time. <laughs> Never liked it, but then it was great. Like, I don't know if you've ever had the cottage cheese in Sonora, Texas. <laughs> at the, at, there's, a, there's a particular hospital. At the hospital. There's a particular hospital in Sonora, Texas, where the cottage cheese is unbelievable. <laughs> you take, what I would do is take a couple of painkillers right before. Yeah, yeah, that's going to help. You know what I mean? That's or if, you, if, if you're open to it, get into a pretty extreme car accident. <laughs> And then, then try, then try to cut then cheese eat it. with pe pe uh, peaches, canned peaches. I'm not sure that was good. I think you I might remember have been very it. high. <laughs> I remember loving it. I think you were very high. Happy very that happy I to was be alive. alive. Yeah, happy to happy be alive. Happy I was alive, and I was like, "This kind of cheese is the. I will eat cottage cheese for the rest of my life." That's the second question. There's of three. Is do you think when we die, is it all? Does consciousness survive the body, or is it over? I don't know. You know. I don't know. I don't know. What do I know? Mm. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I, do. I mean, I don't think, uh, 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 yeah. I don't, I, I don't think consciousness, anything happens to it ever. I, I think it's the real you, what you really are, was never born and will never die. But can will go, but the real you is fine. What is the real me? Tell me. What's looking at your eyes right now? Awareness itself. That's what I would say. That, that energy. You could call it energy. Goes I would just on. call it knowing the, the part of you that knows your experience. Exists, exists after we go? Yeah, I know the materialist worldview is that that knowing is a phenomenon that the brain developed to survive. The spiritual worldview is the opposite, that the consciousness developed the physical to play with itself, essentially. Do you want to smoke some toad? Uh, yeah, no, but, yeah but, but, no, no, so, 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 um, so a scientist, you, you die. Yeah. What happens? Here's the best way so I can in your, in, in, in my view. In my view, the whole thing is, is awareness, is knowingness, is consciousness, mm -hmm. is the quality of being. And if we imagine that like water, you are a swirl of water. You're the activity or the play of that consciousness mm -hmm. briefly and momentarily manifesting as something that I call Ken. And I'm a swirl of water like this. And when that swirl is over and I dissipate into the water, nothing's been added or taken away or nothing has really even happened. Just that swirl stopped happening. But I merged back into myself. But here's here's another that way. Is energy? But isn't yeah, that, you could say it's energy. It's yeah, energy. energy's good. You're a, you're a glass of water and when you die... I pour you into the ocean. That's another way to put it. The way that uh, Chinese Zen puts it is uh, when you break a vase, the air inside the vase just goes into the air. But it's all the same kind of idea that you're the air and briefly you thought you were the vase, but the whole time you were the air. Wow, I like that. Yeah. Joseph Campbell said we're, we're electricity and we've mistaken ourselves for light bulbs. So you think when the light bulb breaks, the electricity is gone, but really it's just the thing that was holding that current of electricity. Wow. Yeah. These are good things to hold on to because we're all going to croak. Well, if, but is the, is the point or the desire to just know that some, there is, there is, why do we have to, why do we feel like we need to know what happens next? Well, you're right. I think that is an ego trip and it, it can even border on narcissism that you're like, clearly I must continue. I want to know the nature of being itself because it's who I am. I want to know myself. 
it's not so much that I want Pete to continue. I just like to explore the phenomenon of awareness that's that's right inside of me that I that I am essentially. But does that theory give you some relief? Of course. If I thought I was Pete and it's all over when Pete's over, uh, what a bummer. But if I Why? Why is it a bummer? Yeah, you're right. I guess it should be. I'm just I'm trying to understand I, and I've I I've been all over the place with like what I think to, to, as far as in terms of a- answering that question. Yeah. Tell me. Well, no, I mean, I've been, you know, all, every different, like I, you know, I thought that there was a heaven for a while. I thought that I feel like we're this energy that moves on. I feel like we're reincarnated. I feel all, every, every, every time I hear something, I'm like, well, that, no, that, actually that's pretty interesting too. Yeah, yeah. But I keep coming to the place of like, why do we need to answer that question? Like, you what, don't. What is, what is the, what is the value of answering that question? Relieving suffering. If it causes you suffering to think that it's all meaningless, this is this is not my feeling. But if you're like, this is bullshit. This but is I don't think it's meaningless. I don't I, think I'm uh, getting that sense strongly uh, that you don't. Right. Which is why you're not plagued with with needing the answer, which is great. Which is, I think, how we're supposed to be. But if on your deathbed you go like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. It's, it's all it's all the big blackness and all that sort of stuff. You would be you would be comforted to to remember a cup of water pouring into the ocean. Right, that you're just going home is another way to put it. Right, 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 right. That right. you're just returning to the source. That you're not going anywhere. That nothing's really happening. Swirl the water going into the ocean, all that sort of stuff. So if it relieves suffering, that's great. Yeah. If you're not suffering, and I say this almost every time when the when the guest turns it back on me, Buddha says. When you ask why, where, where life came from and what happens after we die, he goes, that's like you got hit with an arrow in your leg and you keep going, who shot the arrow? He's like, you've been hit with an arrow. Just get the arrow out and take care of your leg. <laughs> like, right. Don't worry about who shot the arrow. Don't worry about the why. Just take care of suffering. Relieve your suffering. Relieve other suffering. Help each other. Don't, don't worry about the, the big answers because they're not really for us to have. Does that make sense? It does. It it it's um It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's good lot, I hope. Yes, of course. Big. I mean it's you know, it's it's it, it's just it's it's such a crazy thing to think about. Um I guess for me it's I, I, I want. I've stopped thinking about it because of of all the. It just feel. It just feels like it doesn't. It, ultimately, it doesn't matter. And I'm not. And it, right? Does that make sense? Like it doesn't. I think a, a nice way to put that is there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry that, about. Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry. I yes, that's a, a nicer way to put that's it. That's a. Yes. Gr- it doesn't matter. It seems powerless or whatever. But I think if you asked, well, it is powerless, right? Yes, but there's nothing to have power over any anyway. You know what I mean? Like you can surrender. Right. You can trust is another way to put it. If you don't like the word surrender, you can trust it. I like what we came up with. There's nothing to worry about. I think if you ask the enlightened people that have lived that are living, you say, "Is there anything to worry about?" Unanimously, they would say, "There's nothing to worry about." Yeah. That when they meet God, when they have God encounters, or God just being a word for the origin, for the beginning, when they meet the essential nature of what we are, they meet a lover, not a tyrant. They meet something that's seducing us, that delights in us. For sure. That we can trust. For sure. That wants to play with us. Uh, all of that sort of stuff. But it's not malicious or horrible. So no. the bet, but the, you realize this is what what you're feeling, which is gorgeous. A lot of people need help to get there because they were told about the scary God, the alcoholic dad God, the the devil, all these sorts of things. But if you can just get quiet and, and look at what you are, maybe there's breathing techniques, there's meditation, all that sort of stuff. But if you can settle down and get into it, we're back to being love. You go like, oh, this whole thing is is the delight of a giant yes. <laughs> and you are that yes. And deep down you are that yes. And that yes can't be hurt.
The I think about when you asked that question about not where I go, but like the people who are still here mm. dealing with death, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody else's death more and more as I get older. I think about, it's not about, it doesn't matter where I go or where I think I might go or what happens or whatever. It's more about like the the biggest fear or um, uh, the uncomfortable part for me is like saying goodbye to the, the 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 people I love here. Yeah. Right. Sure. Not and, about where I'm going and wanting them to be okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's gorgeous. That's beautiful. The you again. This might be too heady, but I think, and I've written this down, and I'd probably put it in a book or something. But when I tell my daughter, there's nowhere you can go that I'm not with you, I actually think that's literally true because I think underneath all of this and underneath all of this, we're the same thing. Right, because the vase is broken and you're... Exactly, we're all air. We're all air. Which means when you die, I get it. You're leaving, but really... I'm always here. Yeah, where, where could anything be? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's beautiful. Right. So, but that's beautiful. That's what I would tell my own daughter on my own deathbed. I would just be like, literally. I'm not going anywhere. I'm I here. Can't. Ramana Maharshi, a great Indian saint, said his devotees were saying when he was dying, they said, don't go, don't go. And he goes, don't be silly. Where could I go? And that is the that's perspective of an, of an enlightened being. Somebody that understands what's going on is that we're perceiving what's happening linearly, but really it's just. The, the Jewish tradition would say God is one. Look to any other faith for other ways of saying that. <laughs> it's right. all one. Yeah. So don't worry. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's the whole thing. <laughs> well, you you you're really representing it, man. I love how fearless and unencumbered and and how loving you are. I think it's really special. No oh, thanks. Especially for somebody that's so talented. A lot of comedians come in and they and they have a lot of like, but you know, I, I, and you're just kind of like. You're like your outfit. Very By fun the way, speaking of which, sunny. I don't know if we said it on camera. This was a this was a this was a uh, What was it? A, Mr. This was uh, Mr. Turk. This Mr. Was, Turk. This was for um you know, I know it's past Labor Day, but <laughs> I just felt with the heat and everything, it's, it's worth coming in. I'm so glad we had that that little god chat. And brought to you by MrTurk.com slash Marino, of course, yes. I believe. Yeah. It's for 10% for added. 15% off. No, I thought it was added. Purchases. <laughs> okay, no, oh. it's off. Okay, good. Here's the last question. Um, can you tell me a time in your life? I know we burn the bridge. This is how I say it about my memory. I go, the bridge is on fire behind me. <laughs> like It's burning yes. as I'm crossing. Um, with that in mind, with no pressure, can you remember the first thing you said to me today? I'm just kidding. Can you? No. No, I know. Can you think of a time in your life that you laughed so hard you were crying, your belly hurt? Um, it doesn't have to be, I always say this, but it's true. It doesn't have to be a great story. It could have been in college. It could have been when you were eight years old. Somebody fell, somebody farted, a dog walked in the room. <laughs> just like something... But even if you can't remember the circumstance, if you start with how old you are, who you're with, uh, that sort of thing. It's just such a bummer because like- You uh, can't. I, I, can, I can remember crying. I, can, I, I know I've cried so hard I've laughed. I mean, I'm, I know I've laughed so hard I've cried. Right yes. There, right? I know that happened. In a the number state, of times. The state time? Or were there ever times on set? Here's a good way to prime But I don't, I don't, I can't remember. I, I cannot, for the life of me in this moment, tell you a specific, I was, I mean, clearly the accident was right there yeah. for your answer, but I don't know. Let me give you this hook to see if you can pick it up with this. You're doing a scene in something you've shot and it's so funny, you keep ruining it because you're laughing. Erection selection? Were you on the set that day? <laughs> I was on the set that day. I don't tend to laugh again. I think it's because, <laughs> I don't know, because everything's, I don't get too high or too low that like, I don't, I don't feel like I break too much. Yeah. 
in things. And so I don't know. I don't know. I know things make me laugh. Wait, let me ask you this then. This is a, the, What's your fart policy with your wife? You ripping them? Um, and if she gives me the look of like, stop ripping them, I'll stop for a while. But like, you know, I enjoy a good like fart and I like, I like, I like farting loud. Lately, you know, I when, I, when I put on a little weight, the fart, you know, like a, it's interesting to listen to how the fart sounds change, right? Because they're passing through a little bit more skin. So they go, you know, pop, 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 you know, or unless it's a real like heavy one that goes, pop, pop, right? But like when I'm doing my- You can tell your weight by the sound of your fart. Yes. I could play you three For farts sure, I can tell you the, your weight. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Because like as if I'm like, if I'm down to like good fighting weight for my age, right? Like, you know, it comes out like, wow, right? But <laughs> if I'm, but if I've been eating a number of hamburgers and some French fries and uh, I'm not working out every day consistently, uh, my butt will yeah. not be as tight. And so it will be like, blah, 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 like, gotta get to the gym. I gotta get to the gym. <laughs> It's my it's my butt telling me time to hit the gym. <laughs> oh my god! And then sometimes if my wife or myself, if I don't or or so, well, there's I mean we can get into a whole fart conversation, but I know that. <laughs> but like sometimes if I've showered mm -hmm. and I'm just just showered, I'll reach down and like an easy release, and I'll like pull one cheek yeah. out. Spread for easy and release. Go, <sighs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Do one of those. Yeah, yeah. But you really gotta, because sometimes you do it and you think, oh, it's fine. I've I've done. I've pulled enough butt cheek away to get it out. But no, it still goes pop. And then it's like I, you know, and and like my wife will look at me. I just showered. And I'm like, I, I try to do it quiet. But then sometimes when you do the the little ones, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Sometimes for some reason that means the stink is like. It's worse. It's worse. And is that because it, <laughs> it was a because full, when it comes out with a brrrr, it like sort of scatters it, scatters the smell, but when you like let it have a clear lane, right? It's like potent. It's like intense. Oh yeah. It's like bear spray. It's like bear <laughs> spray. It's like bear spray. And then it's like, God damn it. I should have just made the sound and then the stink wouldn't have been as bad. When you make the sound, it's like those little play vacuum cleaners that toddlers use that yeah, 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 it yeah. moves the smell all around it in, moves in every around. direction. Right, and so it's like you get a little bit, but it's not but bad. But not a bear spray. But the bear spray. <laughs> I feel like you and I, we didn't laugh as much as I wanted us to laugh uh -huh. because you're so funny and you're so quick and great with jokes and I wanted to... Um, let, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about things that weren't, <laughs> I wanted to talk about surface jokey things. <laughs> to keep it light to and, keep it and light. to do more bits. So, so I'm sorry if well, I didn't do enough bits. You're silly. You listened to Ben Schwartz, who when I asked him to do it, he said, I'll only do it, but I don't want to go too deep. So you listen to an episode where I was like, we won't go deep, but this is a, a regular episode. I know, but now, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Laughs here. Uh, what happens when we die here? So you um, nailed it. But I really just have to say, I think you're terrific, and I do love how you interview people, and I think that um, you're very connected to who you're talking to, and I really appreciate um, your style. Oh, I really appreciate Not that. Not just in podcasting, but in um, your stand-up and in your the, the shows that you do. Thanks, man. Um, I think you're uh, really uh, fantastic. That's so kind. I really appreciate it. And right back at you. I, I'm not just saying that. Been a huge admirer for many years, and I was too shy. I, I took a lot of bigging myself up to, to ask Ben we were on the phone because we're trying to be friends. Right. Like regular friends. By the way, he did the thing. Does he do the thing? He he said, let's have three conversations. Yes. And they're right? in the calendar. We do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've done it. We've we do a thing where we have to have 
two or three lunches. Okay. And that's the lunch. That's where I saw you. But I was nervous and I didn't want to bother him because one of my biggest fears is that my friends will think I'm using them. Like I don't want Ben to think I'm using him to get to you. But when I saw him, I was like, of course I would. Oh, that would be so cool. And then he mentioned it. What a mensch. That's a mensch. He is a mensch. He's a mensch. He really is a mensch. Just give it. And I'll tell you something else. Menchiness begets menchiness because I've been trying, in, not to virtue signal like you talking to Katie. Yikes. No, but I've been trying, like I was on set recently and somebody mentioned that they couldn't break into voiceover. And I was like, I know uh, the person that books all these things. I'll, I'll set up a meeting. Just do it. Mench it up. Mench it up. Mench it up. What, what you, did it cost what me? What you put out Nothing. is what you get. Ben Schwartz said, I'll even say. He's Schwartz again. He's not Sonic. I have a question for you. I listened to your Michael Showalter. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? And you said to Michael, and I'm just curious. Mm. Finally, I got all the state members. I didn't say or that. something like that. I did not. Something along the no. lines. And I was like, wait a second. I got all the Stella members is maybe what I said. Well, maybe it was Stella members. I I'd, I'd sure as shit would hope so. <laughs> So you've done Black. We've had Black, Wayne, Wayne and Show Walter. Okay. I'm a I'm a comedy kid what from other, the eighties and nineties. What other state members have and, you done? Who, who, you could do Joel Truglio, uh -uh. Kerry, Tom Lennon. I've had Tom Lennon. In fact, as I was sitting here, I was like, God, I got to stop just having the boys on. I got to ask some of these ladies. On. You got to get Kerry on. I would love it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Some of these people are hard to get. Uh, meaning. It's not as easy as just going on IMDb Pro and uh, firing off some random emails. It, right. doesn't, it doesn't work. Well, you have to run into them at a restaurant. If you, if you, if you ever want anybody's, uh, I would appreciate that uh, uh, stuff. Because you I, just Carrie, mentioned it. Because Carrie would be uh, should be fantastic. Carrie's the best. But sometimes I get grief because I have a lot of dudes on, and I'm like, I if this podcast could be ninety percent women, I'd be thrilled. I love Maya Rudolph is one of my favorite episodes. Oh my god, of all that time. was a great episode. Jenny Slade is one of my favorite yeah. episodes of all time. Emily, Maya, Gordon. you talked about a lot about farts. Yeah, I wanted to know if PTA was ripping that PT ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think based on her answer, he, yeah, there will be blood. If you yeah, know what I mean. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah! He'll drink everybody's milkshake. He'll drink and he's a lactose intolerant, <laughs> and that's a problem. Thanks, buddy. This was incredible. We have the guests say the catchphrase at the end. The catchphrase is keep it crispy. It's just how we sign off. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, keep it crispy. <laughs> did it. You did what we talked about the whole episode. You made a big choice that was grounded. What a great way to end. Thank you. <laughs> you know where it all came from. <laughs> you made it weird. You made it weird. You made it weird.